This is amazing, but they just, I, I take this road every single day and there's a, uh, a Woodyard barbecue sign on those classic like highway blue signs. Uh-huh. I just, you know, tell you, you know, what's coming up and they added Woodyard barbecue to the Lamar exit. Uh, on I thirty five, and I was so like, "Of course, you had to go get some." Well, we t- we just took Goob and Katie there before, after the event. Oh, and uh, you know, Goob Goob bought. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad deal. I, I bought it, I bought his dinner. I can't believe you <laughs> let him do that. <laughs> I, what, did you just say that sentence? You can't believe that. Oh yes, I actually. Yeah, can. you can. You, of course, can. Oh, there's the picture. This is amazing. See, there's the collage, dude. Look at this kid, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to him right now. He's going to be Look, like, he's still big. He's pretty jacked. That was 2016. Hey, 17. Yeah. 17? That's what I was saying. He's got the, uh, he's got the lean and clean look. I told him, I told him Andy's uh rule. If you're under 200 pounds, you're 150. Yeah. And I said, look at, look at this 150 pound motherfucker. Right here. <laughs> what, uh, that's uh, cause his shirt. I remember seeing his shirt. And I, was hey, pumped I walked it. in here, dude, listen, I walked in here and, and producer Luke had, uh, Ass naked picture of you on the screen. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the one? I don't Which know. One? Put it on. Luke Luke goes, dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this one up. I was like, oh dude, dude, there he's just naked. Uh, it's ass naked in that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done a couple of questions. I love that I, I love that uh I said that and you're like, Which one? Yeah. I obviously have <laughs> I have many a naked picture online. Yeah, like, dude, did you get my OnlyFans? I did, I, my private? I was. I joke around about this because it's like, uh, out of all the crazy things I've done, you know, I've, I've settled down recently just because of mayhem of life and business. But it's like it's still in there. We're all we're, we're all we're all dudes just doing dumb. You shit. You gotta let it rip every now and then. There yeah. were just freak flags in there somewhere. But the but the OnlyFans thing, I joke around and I'm like, you know, if I ever got up hard for money or just decided to say fuck it. I would probably just spread my butt cheeks <laughs> and, put, and put my asshole on the on OnlyFans every single day, and I'd probably make money. You from probably it. would. I'd probably I'd dude. be known as the oh, that one. Yeah, Look, there you go. That's what I'm talking about, dude. You just throw the butthole teaser out there, people. Will be hey, starting to sign that's up. A, that's a big hat, dude. Congrats. No, no, Congrats. No, no. <laughs> the shadow there below it, you can see that it's. Uh, <laughs> I actually can't see the shadow, so I guess I take that back. Dude, here, here's what you do: you put a Link, you like repost that for Christmas or something. And you say like, "Hey, if you want to see the whole nude, just hit this button." And it's that black dude from from 2020 <laughs> from COVID, <laughs> and it's just his dong out. <laughs> All right, what's that dude? Hey Someone, man, anybody actually know that dude's R. name? R.I.P. I think he passed away. No, oh, yeah, man. I think he, he, was died. A light, he was my light switch flip for a while. You know, yeah. just hit his body over the over the light switch. <laughs> switch up. So I actually thought of that. I was joking around. I I started just trolling people on my Instagram stories where I'd be like, uh, like I started telling people like, no TRT anymore. More and people are like, oh my God, what? how did you do that? Yeah. I'm like, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> do I look like I'm not on DRT or anything? And uh, I was like, I'm going to start saying, like, I was going to say, I'm selling these certain programs that are absolute dog shit, yeah. that aren't real, like just fictitious things. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to put a link and I was going to start linking them to sh- dude, super, just, just like, to the dude there with his, with his dog hanging out or anything screwed up. And I'm like, that might be a little too far because yeah, it gets some of it. my daughter's friends follow me that would, and I'm like, ah, I probably shouldn't put that crazy dick picture in there. I told <laughs> well, not me them, but yeah, <laughs> I told my dad, I, I was like, uh, because me and my dad have a bad habit of sending like the most disgusting things back and forth yeah. to each other. And it's I a told, good relationship. Right I told there. Kim, Dudes. I go, hey, listen, if I die, the one text message you have to delete is me and my dad's because everyone's <laughs> going to think we are just fucking weird. <laughs> but that that specific delete my search history. That specific uh, picture has been sent back and forth between me and my dad probably fifty times. It brought the world closer together. It really that did. guy. It, it changed the world. They had it, 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 with all the crazy things that happen in society. Having that, it's like, yeah. yeah, it gotta be. Thank God we still had that. Like nothing, nothing was safe. Everything, everything you said was going to get you canceled. But luckily, you could still send pictures of that dude's dong, and you're good. No one, no one got upset at you at all. There's, there's, dude, I wouldn't you got, expect you got one on deck or something. Uh, that, so I, <laughs> there was these. I was just trying to look through. I got there's too many tags from today, but I sent it to <laughs> Hannah, and it was about like. Like if you and your boys, uh, if your wife ever saw you and your bros uh, chat together, she'd be like, <laughs> yeah. what is this? It was like some movie quote. I'm like, oh man, this is gold. Yeah, it's just like- I uh, sent it to her and she's like, you're disgusting. You and your friends are disgusting and gay. Yes. So like, what's going on there? It's okay. <laughs> hey, when you, met, when you met Hannah, were you like, man, 
does she know any of your quotes? Does she know any of the movie stuff that you just talk about? Any of the funny stuff you talk about with your buddies? No, which is great because Hannah's Hannah's ten years younger than me, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's a whole like comedy generation. Away. Oh yeah. yeah, she's like, oh, that's from a movie. And I'm like, mm, pretty iconic it's, movie. Yeah, <laughs> you should. Know I'm it. actually I questioning our relationship said, right I now. I said big gulps, huh? You yeah. don't know what that is? <laughs> no, no idea. No. Mm-hmm. My Dude. wife told me, and this was like, I was like, do I still marry her or not? She's like, uh, Will Ferrell's not funny. Ooh. And I said, that's a blanket. You can't say that Will really. Ferrell is not. I was like, old if he school. he isn't, who is? I was like, old school is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen yeah. in my entire life. And so you can't say that he's not funny. This what? is a good one. We just watched this. So you do you watch Hot Ones at all? The guy uh, that eat the, wake, the chicken wings? I, every now and then, yeah, I'll see the clips on there. But just not. had Vince Vaughn on and they were like. Oh, from his new thing, Bad Monkey. Yes. I just started watching the show. Any good? Uh, it's I'd different. It. It's a whole different. It's a whole different thing. I, I'm enjoying it. He uh, he starts off, and this is one of the best. Like set, uh, Sean Evans, he's uh, host of that show, but he always asks like the best questions. And his best question was at the very end was, as his mouth's on fire, he's like, "What are some iconic quotes that people just yell to you as they see you?" Uh, yeah. Right? And he was like, "You know, the one that no one knows." It was actually me that made it. It's now just become like a part of what you say when you see a buddy is bring it in for the real thing. <laughs> And you're like, holy shit, you forget that was him. Oh, that's right. You know, it you, was. Old yeah. school. We're talking about old school. He's like, yeah, bring it in for the real thing. And you're like, wow, that was actually completely made up by Vince Vaughn. And he never gets any credit for it. You know what no I mean? Oh, shit. And like, I bet you Hannah knows that one. You know mm. what I mean? That was, that was a major hurdle in my relationship with my Hannah. I was like, how am I supposed to hang out with you every day? It was. I'm just wasting I'm classic literally got after classic cr- jokes with whenever you. She, whenever she sees where something comes from, she's like. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. She looks over at you and gives you the old yep. acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. Zach Galifianakis gif, you know what I'm talking about, where he's like, looks like a pioneer man and he looks over at you and he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, bro, that's not <laughs> Zach Galifianakis. Yes, it is. No, it's the guy that rides oh. the fucking bear. Okay. Oh, no. that's, look it up. That's Zach Galifianakis. It's the guy that rides the bear. How much? Wait, Who's which one? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I don't know there, if I know which one you're talking there about. There is a guy. Say, this is a, Zach this is a gif. Oh, it's the one where he just goes like this and he's got the beard. It's not Zach Galifianakis. Oh, that's from. That's from an old school Western movie. Yes. No. And he's riding um, a bear. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, he's going to get it. Luke's going to put it on the I, screen for I'm us. I'm so happy that I know this and Jeff doesn't. <laughs> this is not right. There's no way I'm wrong about this. Yeah. That's, that's the Robert Redford gif. Yeah. But a, isn't he, in the movie, he rides a bear. You tell me this doesn't look identical to Zach Galifianakis. That's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> This is how this is how your wife looks at Dude, you after one of those yeah, jokes. Yeah. Seth, I'm gonna be honest. If you grew your hair out, you know what I'm saying. It could it's the beard. Halloween's you know? coming up. Halloween's coming up. Not Robert, too late. You should be that. For Halloween. <laughs> like, come on. Hey, hey. Like just for the just for the axe and sledge page, and you fucking look over this at the camera. You go look over at the camera real slow and just. A new, a new, uh, <laughs> a new farm fed comes out in flavor, oh, and they're like, Robert "Is it good?" Redford. And it's just you going. Mm-hmm. How good is that new s'mores? It's pretty good, you know. And then just, yeah. hmm. <laughs> you know how it is. It's gonna be hard to transition to like, what serious, was it like in the serious <laughs> shit? What was it like at the Europa in 2010? We got. Hold on, I got some good ones written down. Dude, thank you for being on, man. Thank I you for coming it. to our barbecue. Is, uh, I, uh, you know, you're a guy that uh, I've watched your content since. When did you start putting out content? Like 2016. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. You kind of came on the scene really hot because, like I was saying before the podcast started, you were one of you were you were like the first wave of people that I was like, oh shit, people are just being honest now. You yeah, know? I, I uh, and I disappeared from the fitness industry in 2012, end of 2012, after my and stopped competing and went to home to save my family or whatever I thought was going to happen and didn't happen. But whenever in 2015, I was like, I really miss bodybuilding. Well, from 2012 to 2015, oh, yeah, there you go. Back 20, June of 2015, there's me being a fucking dad at the beach. And I was like, I miss bodybuilding so much. I want to come back. My home life was pretty much a wreck. Um, and I was like, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back in. But if I do, I'm going to have my own company. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to be me. I'm not going to be this clean cut white kid that's told what to do just to sell supplements or sell out. I'm just going to be me fuck everyone and uh uh jason huh was like the industry would love you and he's like do you know anything about instagram i'm like what's that <laughs> in 2015 he's telling right. me dude he's like people not love too you late to come back yeah. mm-hmm. and i was like oh okay and i thought about it and i was like i miss bodybuilding it is who i am so i started training again got back on the sauce 
And uh, I was like, I fucking love lifting weights again. Loved it all. So from 2012 to 2015, I was just working normal jobs, regular jobs. I was, uh, I had a landscape company for a minute and then I went back into safety consulting and, uh, and I was like, I work with really cool people as a consultant. I was all over the place doing, uh, meeting people in the oil and gas industry, construction, manufacturing, doing trainings, uh, all kinds of stuff. And I was like, these are ignorant, hardworking motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. These are my people. Right? <laughs> and I was like, but nobody makes them cool. I was like, and if I ever came back into the industry, what would I come back and do? And I was like, well, there's apparel companies that are selling a lot of apparel. And I was like, but nobody's making like the people I work with, like these hardworking dads, these ignorant, rough handed, tough motherfuckers. Nobody's like, who are they? They have daughters that they're working hard and working overtime to send to college. But nobody's making that guy cool. Mm -hmm. Why not? And I'm like, huh. I, I'm that guy. Like, I'm working hard to create an opportunity for my family. I have two daughters. I'm like, hmm, I should, this is me. What would I like to see? And I was like, these are all, and I was working in oil and gas with these guys and working on construction. And I'm like, these are just roughnecks, dude. These are just wild, rough, ignorant motherfuckers that like working hard and love their families. I was like, all American roughneck. Brand, just, was, Brand was born right then and there. And I said, uh, I was like, all right. I was like, that's it. Did so, you toy with any other names at that time? Nope. It that's just, awesome. I was, I, I immediately looked it up online. I was like, does anybody look, oh, there it is. That's, the, for it? that's yeah. beautiful. That's, Very you got, there's, I mean, obviously everybody has, you know, AR in their head and you see AAR, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it's, it goes well. Oh yeah. You and, know? and, uh, that's why, uh, I was like, all right. So we came up with a concept cause I like shooting guns and I'm a big fan of America. And uh, I was like, this is it. And I went to Bob, who my business partner, uh, now this was whenever we had no money or nothing. I was like, hey, Bob, I was like, I got it. I went and saw him. I hadn't seen him in like five, six years. It's like, I got an idea. He's like, cool. So I told him all about it. And he's like, man, that's a great idea. So here's the thing, though. I ain't got no money. I can't pay you. I can't do anything for you. But if it works, I'll give you half of everything we ever do. He's like, all right, I don't have anything. Yeah. Half of something would be great one day. <laughs> Turned out we created all this stuff and it's great. But, uh, and oh, I, that's cool, man. I mean, so, that's, so you guys fun. are boys from like way back? Uh, yeah, we met in 20, like 2010. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we met at another company we were both working at. Uh, and then in 2011, 2012, I disappeared. And then literally 2015, I called him back. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, dude. Now you, you just knew he was a good guy from back then. He was like a standout yeah. guy. From Sim simple dude. Yeah. Knew how to take pictures, design things, and print things. Yeah. A lot of skills I'm assuming you didn't have at the time. That's all I didn't have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't have the things that he had, and he didn't have the things I had. And that's why it worked. But uh, that's why whenever I came back, I was like, if I come back, I'm going to be me. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not going to be told what the fuck to do. I'm just going to be me. Unapologetically, Seth Ferrosi. And before, I was clean-cut Seth. And now I'm like, mm, I've always been kind of the fuck you guy. I just didn't say it or, or like put it out there because like if I did that, people wouldn't like me because right. uh, sponsors were telling me to be this. Right. So if they were paying me money, I was going to be that. Can I get an example? What a hoss, bro. The, the times, well, but in these, in, <laughs> but this was like at the time, like, uh, you know, 20, 2009, 2010, and you're really ascending in bodybuilding in those moments, you know, you were achieving a lot of the things I'm sure you'd worked so hard to get to. Mm -hmm. What was some examples of like where, you know, it's basically everything's, you know, rosier through those lenses, right? And you're hearing you need to do this and you're like, well, they I don't want to do that. They weren't ever specifically like you have to do this. It was more or less um, I took it upon myself to make sure that I always did a good light of everything. I made sure things look squeaky clean on my side because like I should be squeaky clean because that's what people want to hear. They don't want to hear me say, go fuck yourself. Yeah, you're not allowed they, to stand for anything, you know. Yeah, just, they, yeah they just be agreeable want you, they, as hell. Yeah, be very agreeable. They want, you to, they want you to look good on stage. They want you to look good for the camera. They want you to be this and that. And it's like, that's one side of everything. And social media didn't really exist back in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, I just was the, the grittier look, really hardworking-esque, but not, um, not so much of um, outspoken, you know. With you on the Damn, beach, dude. with your with you on the beach with your little girl, though, I do miss sick. that chest rug. Oh yeah, right? if you just get that going yeah, all the way again, yeah. that'd be pretty sick. That's pretty Burt Reynolds of Ooh, you. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you sponsored by at the time? Muscle Tag. Nobody right there. Really? I was an I was an Eva Jen wear, shirt wearing son of a bitch because that was Hani before Hani had any athletes with Eva Jen. He's like, hey, 
He's like, this was 2009 nationals. And he's like, Hey, you know, uh, can you make sure that you wear Evagen t-shirts whenever you're there? He's like, you don't have any sponsors. We're trying to get you there, but it'd be really great for me. And I was like, but I will wear whatever the fuck you want me to wear. <laughs> you are my man. So, yeah. and some of the pictures and interviews I had Evagen stuff on. And after that, I got a, uh, I got, uh, we had the interview, so I had the Evagen shirt on. And then after that, I got a spawn, I got a sponsorship opportunity with muscle tech. Wow, man. And, then, and, uh, and it was big. Cause at that time I had no money. And muscle and tech at the time, were you know, they the ones who were kind of like throwing out those six page ad reports in those magazines? They were muscle tech. Yeah. Oh, look how young he is. My gosh, dude. That was in, I think that's uh bro. That's in 2016 too. Right there. Yeah. That's Wild 2016. Times. But he, um, uh, I love that guy. But, uh, whenever that happened, he's like, dude, you got to take it. He's like, I can't pay you that kind of money. I was like, you can though. And he's like, I can't. Seth. <laughs> he's like, I don't have the money to pay you. And, uh, but muscle tech, dude, they were a great sponsor. Were they? they were phenomenal. They, uh, they just wanted to keep me to do a good job. Like even I, I was the one who revoked the contract with muscle tech yeah. in 20 in 2012. Well, they have such a storied like history with, uh, with athletes. Dude, I would I mean, guess that you Jay, would get, come yeah, on you, you would want it. You would want to like live up to that. You know? Oh yeah. The very clean, yeah. agreeable, yeah. be a good job, mm -hmm. do a good job. You're, Genuinely a poster boy. Yeah, I, like, genuinely. I like muscle tech. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I am. Uh, <laughs> yes, I like muscle tech. <laughs> <laughs> like that's all that. And it Ronnie was by cell tech. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and that's. But yeah. yeah, you were agreeable for that, and it was like uh, okay. And then it dawned on me, like, who buys supplements? At that time, it, the big thing was who buys supplements, and it's like, well, if you're a Seth Ferozzi, clean cut, young white guy, that's who buys those supplements. Yeah. That's who you are. Okay. I, and it was, it was just being very agreeable. And then, uh, but in 2012, whenever I was like, I'm fucking out, I don't want to deal with this no more. My home life's a mess. They were like, you're thinking too irrationally, Seth. We'd like to keep you. And I'm like, I don't want your money. And they're like, just take a couple of briefs. Why don't you call us back in a couple months? I'm like, so you want to keep paying me, even though I'm telling you, I'm not going to do anything. They're like, yes, yeah, you're going to change your mind. And I'm like, mm, no, I'm not. <laughs> so then they, they wouldn't take no for an answer. So. I called him back two months later and said, I don't want it. They're like, take another couple months. No shit. It took till February of 2013. That's pretty cool of them. Though. That's actually pretty. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, that's something I didn't <clears throat> see coming at all. And they yeah. were, but, and it was because there was times whenever they, uh, there was a couple of times when they needed me to do things like, because an athlete couldn't make it to a certain venue or to a certain other city. And they're like, Hey Seth, can you come and we'll, we'll get you a plane ticket here. We'll set you up in a hotel. We just need you to do this seminar. We need you to come here and do this. I was like, yeah, guys, whatever. You're paying me to do whatever. I'll just show up. Yeah. So like just, you know, I don't know, being a good person or just living up to your end of what they asked you to do, it worked out. Yeah. And from them, like, I, I have nothing bad to say. People have horror stories about muscle tech. I do not. Yeah. yeah. Nothing but good things. You I know, I've, I've, I've yet to, you know, I, outside of reading things about that, but like, I've never met anybody in person that had anything bad to say about sponsorship deals with them. And, and they weren't paying me the million dollar contracts either. Though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was at lower level what? at the time. I mean, Phil was get, Phil. I mean, that was that was Phil's big sponsor by the end, right? I mean, like he was doing right after Jay. It was Phil, wasn't it? Oh, as far yeah. as Muscle Tech, uh -huh. oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he was on the ad reports. Yep. Oh yeah. I Phil, mean, was, they, Phil was big with Muscle Tech. That they, was yeah. that was the that was when they were giving the mes Muscle Tech uh, contracts after winning the Olympia, right? Yep. Yeah. The yeah. amount of brands that that saw Muscle Tech do that and they thought this is going to be our ticket, we're going to sign the big name athlete, right? You got. Remember Muscle Meds, mm -hmm. Muscle Meds, and they put they took Kai and put him yep. on everything. Yep, Carn where the, where's, carnivore. Where's Muscle Meds now? Right, we still sell it. Unbelievable! Like yeah. I mean, just, find it uh, at supplement superstores. <laughs> we still sell Muscle Meds. <laughs> no, we do not. We sell yeah. Carnivore still. Carnivore. Yes, we do. Still there. Beef protein on, isolate. Dude. What are you talking yeah. about, man? Oh my gosh, Jeff, man. you need to get back in the stores fruit. a little bit, bub. Fruit punch, <laughs> fruit punch, beef protein. That doesn't sound good to you? Oh, it's the delicious. There was like a Coca-Cola flavor of as much really? as I of a of a beef protein isolate. Nothing sounds more natural than powdering up some beef and making it taste like fruit punch and Coca-Cola. I remember uh I remember seeing cuz that was MHP was big whenever like I was coming up yeah. and looking oh, yeah. at the magazines and everything. Victor, right? And it was uh yeah, Victor uh, Martinez. Victor Martinez. Vic, but even holding. before him, it was Gerard. It was yeah. Gerard because I remember seeing him because that was like th one of the competitors that like, I don't know, I just old school guy. So when I was young watching bodybuilding in the magazines and stuff, he's in there. I'm like, oh, that's a guy from MHP. He owns a company that. I mean, fuck you think about it. He was one of the first guys that were like, actually was a competitor that turned into a big brand. That's right? true. He made something. Yeah. Yeah. But What's MHP who doing was, no, Who was the... Uh, like, they, where are they? Who was the... I mean... 
I think they're still big in yeah, powerlifting. Still, yeah. Still big with power. Which at the time, uh, what was it? They had the, uh, who was the strong man that they, they were sponsoring? Um, huge black guy. Um, they, they, Brian Shaw. They, As I they say, spread, all I could think of is Brian Shaw. But they had, they had, uh, was it Henry? Luke. Jack Henry. I don't know. Uh, Mark Henry. Mark Henry. Mark, Mark Henry. Henry was sexual one chocolate of from WWE. Yeah. <laughs> so, you sexual know, we're talking about dude. muscle tech. Who, you know, when you were coming up, who was the bodybuilder that you looked up to and you're like, well, shit. Oh, I want to bring Jay Cutler. Yeah. Jake, huge Jay Cutler fan. Yeah. The man, dude. Huge. Still the man. I, I, I love Jay. Yeah. I think that he's, uh, I don't know. He was a, he was a great role model for the, from a competitive standpoint of like what you should be from a business standpoint and from a competitor standpoint with how you handle business and people. Mm -hmm. The guy always said the right thing in public. You know, he never really stepped out of line in any way, shape, or form, and he was dedicated to his craft. So if you have someone who is so dedicated to their craft that you cannot criticize it in any way, shape, or form. And then also has a reputation with going, showing up two shows on time, staying there till the last fucking fan, signing autographs, having merch, having things to sell, creating a better environment for people to be a part of. Like you can't beat a guy like a pro's that. pro, yeah. man. I if mean, uh, from every angle, somehow the guy hasn't competed in forever and he's is so still jacked. everything to people. Yeah, yeah. All I've ever heard about you, Seth, is that when you do events and so forth, it doesn't matter how, you know, how, when the event ended, if the line is there, you're going to talk to every single person. And I'll, I mean, I'm with you. And, and, you know, you saying that about Jay, well, we just got done with our, for our listeners, we literally just got done with our annual, you know, customer appreciation event. And uh, we're two hours late to start this podcast because Seth had to talk to every single person that was in that line. And, and uh, that means a lot to us, man. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to toot your horn, right? You know, but I mean, like the <laughs> truth is, to, he's trying to give you the a little truth is, dude, I mean, like, table, it, bro. Okay. it means a lot okay. to everybody, it man. To, it, it, it is. Uh, I appreciate it. And it's because uh, I, I have this thing in life where you look at, you know, if you can take blips and pieces from other people in your life and just inject it, you don't have to like someone 100 percent. If you see some if you see a quality in somebody that you're like, man, that's outstanding. How can I add that into my life if I ever get the opportunity? Whenever I saw Jay Cutler doing those things, like, dude, just won the Olympia and was there for hours after making sure he met every single person that was in line to meet him. I'm like, this motherfucker is crazy. Mm -hmm. Arnold Classic standing there all fucking day, losing his weight that he just gained to do that. He's like, I, I travel. I, I was there. I saw it up close. I watched it happen. He's like, we'd eat lunch. And he's like, he's like, I'll drop 12 pounds from this show because I'm not eating as much in this. I'm like, 12 pounds? How the fuck is that possible? <laughs> But it didn't matter because it was him, his brand, and more and more than anything, the people that make it all possible. So if I could take that one day, if I could take that piece that he has, if I ever get the opportunity to be somewhat like that, why would I not like live it to the fullest? So I did. And like things like this today and whenever any event, bro, I don't what am I doing? This is all I gotta do today. I get to meet fans. Yeah. This is the coolest fucking thing in the world. And it, it, it's that great. line didn't even sh like, dude, that line stayed. It was a good time. Yeah, it was. And, and it's all the people that make everything possible for me and everybody that works for us. And whenever the people that work for us get to see the, the see that that's what they work for. That's because I'm not an easy person to work for. I'm a little intense at the office. <laughs> uh, it, sometimes this smile is not on my face. But the reason that I push all of our employees to be the best that they can is because of the people. We get to create cool shit for people. So why should we not give everything we can to make that happen? You're not asking anything of anybody that you're not doing yourself. Fuck no, no. It's and and I and that's what I believe is how you begin to have uh, a level of success that uh, just continues to build little Which, by little, like we were day saying, by it, day. The brand will will take on you know that life of its own because of the values you've instilled in it. Um, the hard work motherfucker attitude. Is there other values that you instill in your team besides those? Do you have other values on top of that that you guys preach inside the building? Uh, uh, no, it's kind of like you said, I won't ask anybody to do something that I won't do myself or I haven't done already. Um, and as we continue to grow, it's like that mentality of being a hard working motherfucker. Like just because you're not the tallest, you're not the smartest, you're not the most handsome, you're, you're not the, the quote unquote, whatever it may be. <laughs> Fuck you, <dude. laughs> That's a good one. I'm doesn't sorry. mean that you can't be incredible. <laughs> Fuck you. And, uh, <laughs> cause you think, you know, you, we all have our, you know, we all have our moments of vulnerability or not thinking the highest, highest of ourselves. 
And it's like, no, 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 pack all that shit up and throw it the fuck out the window. You can achieve great things by just paying attention and continuing to build on what you learned that day and just working really hard. Because I know I'm not the smartest at my company, like in accounting or finance, like pretty sure the accounting and the CPA, like those are the people that know a lot more <laughs> about it than I do. But whenever we sit in a room, I'm going to challenge everything that they think and ask some questions that they might not be thinking from a business standpoint or a sales standpoint or an inventory standpoint. So it's being able to sit in a room and have these conversations with other smart people and ask them questions and play devil ad advocate so that the company grows. You know, within sales, why would I not have the finance department talk, not talk to the sales department? The sales department definitely should talk to finance because sales knows sales, finance knows finance, and the bottom line of the company. Sales can't just go saying, we need to give them this because of this. It's like, no, 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 pump the brakes. <laughs> Let's have a conversation and argue through it. Mm -hmm. And not from a negative standpoint, but positive. because Challenge have, each other on yeah, it. Yeah, you have yeah. to. And, and that's something that within the company I welcome wholeheartedly is challenging someone else. But you're not allowed to be a fucking negative dickhead. You challenge them for the growth of the company and for them to learn what you do and get better from both sides. And it's, and you know, get comfortable with those things. Get comfortable did, at being cha challenging someone on something. Did you, so, you know, when you were basically doing blue collar work, were you running crews? No, or like no. Is, w w so is this basically something you've had to learn? As, as I say, this business acumen is, is impressive. Yeah. And I'm just saying with, you know, you have a background, obviously, in the bodybuilding world. You've mentioned the landscape. You mentioned other things you've done, blue collar. Where the business acumen come in? Yeah. My dad has owned a cabinet company. He owned a cabinet company for 43 years. He was a small business owner, took it over from his father. So I grew up with a small, my dad owned a small business his entire life. Um, so whenever growing up, the blue collar work that I did was for my dad, mm -hmm. kitchens, bathrooms, home remodels, uh, kitchens, countertops, bathrooms, towel, you name it. If there was a home remodel, we could remodel an entire house, top to bottom, front to back. And, uh, so I grew up doing that. Uh, at one point he had 22 employees total, uh, two different showrooms, a manufacturing shop. And I was just the grunt bitch that did everything ignorant. Go, so go carry all the uh, concrete bags. In your, you, you, you name it. Like I, 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 <laughs> I'm sure there's worse. So, that's but pretty I'm good trying one. to think that's of the worst thing. That it was, I've done. It was, it was, uh, not only that, it was almost like shingles. <laughs> no, it's with my dad. It's uh, you know doing all the doing all the kitchens and bathrooms and stuff. It was um, I'm his oldest son. And I'm the low man on the totem pole, so you're going to do the most shit work possible. <laughs> Anything that this place needs at the bottom line, that's where you're starting. Yeah. So in seventh grade, I'm doing like the most, there, yeah, there's my old man. <laughs> uh, so if anything, like, I just remember. In one of the showrooms? My nickname. No, that's his back porch. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, he would be like, I, he looks like he would still kick your ass. You know what I'm saying? Like dad's got that. He's dad. got the old he he mean, definitely did. Young Cause whenever I was, it. whenever I was 18 years old, everybody thinks they're definitely whooping their dad's ass. Yeah. Uh, you got to wait a little bit longer after that. 18 is not old enough. <laughs> not old enough. Yeah. No, nah. but, uh, it, it started, I'll never forget like every Monday morning, uh, it would be like, I'd have to take, make sure that the dumpsters that just got emptied out in the back. And we had a lot of sawdust in there from cutting countertops and cabinets and wood and stuff. They would be, there'd be sawdust in the bottoms of the dumpsters. Well, the dumpsters would get water in it. They'd just turn into sludge. Yeah. So every Monday morning I'd shovel it off and it just stunk uh. to high heaven. And I'm like, it's Monday morning at 7 a.m. And I am in this. And my dad just say, hey, did you clean the dumpsters yet? N not yet, dude. I got to get to this. He's like, what the fuck are you waiting for? I'm like, oh, okay. So that foul <laughs> mouth that I have came from this environment. I'm 12 years old being like, hey, motherfucker, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you, are you fucking stupid? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> maybe. maybe, I don't know, am I? Yeah. But it's, I grew up in that environment with these, uh, with complete degenerates. <laughs> I grew up with guys that did not graduate high school, that could not, uh, you know, they would spell words wrong on, on kitchens, on like boxes. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? Does that say green? <laughs> G R E N E? No. <laughs> what do you like? But it's, uh, and, but at the, what I learned through that environment was that even though they, uh, even though they weren't the smartest, they didn't graduate high school, they smoked ungodly amounts of cigarettes, um, they kind of smelled like beer at 7 a.m. They were able to do things with their hands that were absolutely incredible. They were able to build cabinets and be a craftsman at something that was just, we would go into people's houses and create this kitchen and these people would be like, oh my God, it's beautiful. 
they're doctors. And they're like, this is incredible. I can't believe what you guys did in here. And I'm like, Jim was half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, that guy's bro, passed out. Hey, this dude, this yeah. dude was leaving to smoke a cigarette those every guys, 30 minutes. <laughs> the crazy thing about those guys is they could they can be smoking cigarettes half drunk at 7 a.m. But when it comes to like measurements and math, you're just like, how did you just do that without a calculator? I that's what I'm saying. I so I grew up with these. They would they. I remember there's so many fucked up stories of like you know I'm 14 years old and I'm working on you know whenever you're inside a kitchen and they're not nobody's home we're there and it, you know you're putting something in or you're just in tight spaces and it's or it's a shitty job you start just having conversations about anything and I'll never forget the one guy's like hey he's like so you're 14 now right you're in high school I'm like yeah he's like. I was a pussy. And I'm like, <laughs> I knew this was going immediately. And I'm like, I'm like, it's good. And, well, meanwhile, You're I don't like, know. I don't know. <laughs> yes. But I didn't know what to say. So I was like, oh, dude, it's good. He's like, yeah. He's like, you having sex yet? I'm like, oh, man, you know, I don't know. Girls are cool. You know, I'm starting to get su feel super awkward about it. I don't know what's going on. He's like, just make, f make sure you spit on it before you put it in. I'm like. What's happening right now? <laughs> Let me just write that down. You're like, a pencil sir, and paper spit and on what? That's what, I mean. yeah, spit, what am I spitting on exactly? <laughs> the whole time in my head at that young age, I'm like, so I'm going to spit on it? <laughs> <laughs> like I had the visual created in my head. So that's the environment. The poor I grew girl up that in. lost her virginity to you. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, you got all this, you got all these blue collar guys in your ear. Like, all right, I gotta, I gotta do this. So, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. So I learned very quickly that you better have a sense of humor. You better not judge people just based on one thing of them. There is a lot of things you can, good things that you can gain from people. You don't have to like them a hundred percent. You're able to pull pieces from people to create yourself to be better. And working in that environment with those guys really helped me do that. You know, I would work for my dad. We would do these, uh, we would do things for like the hope for humanity or, or, you know, some type of uh, humane society work on the weekends, charity work. And I wouldn't get paid for it. He'd be like, hey, we're going to do this this week. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> He's like, you're not getting paid for Trying it. Trying to get some high school pussy, dude. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? And then as I got older now, I understand why my dad did charity. Work. Yeah, yeah. It just made you feel good, and it was the right thing to do for your community. So there was, there's been a lot of things that how can I take those things that I learned with those degenerate guys that were actually really great human beings that were working hard for their families to create something cool yeah, for, for yeah. not, for you not to dismiss them because of the degenerate antics and stuff you'd see and like have the humility to see the good there is just like a unbelievable, uh, I mean, say I call it a skill, oh, you know, I, that you had to learn. But I mean, like, was that something that you had to eventually be taught or you just genuinely saw like the, the faces of those doctors, for example, and say like, wow, well, okay, it's not all bad here. It's it didn't, it was, it didn't make sense at times. I'm like, what the, why? You're you. You're this special doctor guy, and he's him. What you? It was learning this respect and just kind of paying attention to it. But also, you need to know whenever you just need to shut up and listen and just kind of take a step back and watch it all happen and not interject yourself and just absorb as much information as you can and just pay attention. Uh, my dad, again, you know, he he taught me a lot of these things about you know. Uh, just pay attention in life, you know, in certain circumstances, know when to not talk and when to talk, um, know when to just take a step back, uh, and then just learn how people react in any scenario. Don't get too excited. Just kind of take a step back and see how they respond to certain things. And, uh, he's always done a good job and he's just, my dad's a pretty simple guy. Very, I'm, I am definitely a strong version of my father. Very cool. That's such an awesome story, man. And you, you talked about this, you know, as far as like the origin story for all American roughneck. Now you're a little more further along when you got into Axe and Sledge and you started Axe and Sledge. Is there an inspiring story? Because here's the thing, the amount of IFBB pros out there that we've talked about before that are like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to start a supplement company. I'm going to sell it for a hundred million dollars. This is going to be easy. This is going to be great. And there's so many in the in the graveyard right now, dude. It was Where, easy. What, wasn't it? what did you see in your? But I'm saying like, what kind of a, uh, you know, what what would inspire you to say, you know, what? Because it was from all of the conversation we've had to this point, I I could not possibly believe that you started that with the thought, of, let's just do this to make a ton of money. No, uh, I've always been a supplement guy. I love supplements. I think they're cool. I like pre workouts. I think they're awesome. I've always found fascination in them. Um, I like. I I just I don't know. I like the fact that uh, it's a way to supplement your life to make what you're doing cooler. And whenever you, I was young, taking like Rip Fuel 
and like things that had ephedrine in it. I was like, this is fucking crazy. So wait, I'm getting leaner because I'm doing cardio and taking this fat burner. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, this is awesome. And then when pre-workout started becoming a thing, I'm like, this is insane. I was eating Pinnacle Andro Poppers. Do you remember those? Dude, we didn't have those. No. No. Uh, Oh, dude, back in the day, Pinnacle had these Andro Poppers. That was whenever like... They were they were like legit steroids. Oh, they yeah. were a step away. We we had what some, was the uh, compound? You remember? I do not remember. Yeah. One AD. One okay. AD. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we and, had uh, it was and, a, like seventeen methyl A. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was legit as yeah. fuck. You ate them, you were getting bigger. You Bro. were gonna get fucking gyno. Yeah. It was gonna be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All the above. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Look at that. The Androstat, the purple one. Yeah, the one they were like upper, they upper were, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were That's like the one. They were like Flintstone fucking. Uh, they Gump, tasted like Flintstone vitamins. Yeah. Yeah, you got big as fuck eating those. It was no, real. That's, that's apparently what Mark McGuire said he took, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only that, right? <laughs> but, bro, um, you know, we had this one called Methyl V Test when I first got started, right? This is 08. <laughs> and it was all dimethylated stuff, just awesome for your liver, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was, um, it was a trend, it was Tren, P Plex, and Andro. Was that the three? Yeah, it was. A, there it is, baby. It was a yeah. trend and Muscle Fortress, that bad boy yeah. right there. Three compounds in one. And this is my favorite. They had one called Vasotest, and it was the nineteen. It was the nineteen nor trend compound Vasotest. with with a pump product built in. Seth, I'd be like, dude. So imagine I got a I got a bench four fifty. I need to the do pump least... you felt. You had a. It was. It had three grams of arginine in the pills along <laughs> with your nineteen yes. nor compound. Yes. My God, I was, was in college when I took that. That was amazing. So I, from, from that point, whenever pre-workout started becoming more and more of a thing, I was like, this is fucking awesome. And then uh, obviously whenever you're a young meathead, you're like, oh man, if I had my own supplement company, it'd be super cool. I'd do this and I'd do that and I'd do this. And you have all these ideas. And, uh, and of course it's exciting because if you love, you know, this industry, everybody thinks they want to do it. And um, uh, how we, you know, with Bob and I, when we started AAR, uh, it started with 2200 bucks, and then it just started working. 22 turned into four, four turned into eight, that whole bit. It just, it did. It went from making a few thousand dollars to $10,000 to tens of thousands of dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars. And it was like, holy fuck. In 2017, we were, uh, we were making hundreds of thousands of dollars through the company, not ourselves, but the company was. And it was like, holy shit, this is actually working. And at that time, I was also sponsored by Blackstone Labs, and I was selling I would, my commission. Super was, DMZ, by the way. Sorry. Oh, shout out Super DMZ. <laughs> yes. my, uh, my, 2.0. Com- my commissions were starting to get bigger. Yeah. And then I was like, holy fuck. I was like, I'm actually selling a lot of supplements. And then uh, I moved on to Primeval Labs, and whenever I was with Primeval, uh, at that point, like I was selling a lot of shit for them. And like it changed their company. And I was like... I am selling a lot of supplements. And that's whenever it became like a real thought. I was like, if we could start our own supplement company, I'd sell a lot of fucking supplements. And that's whenever, that's how that whole bit began into saying like, we should really look into this and see if we could actually do it. The, the com, like, so the part I want to make sure that I'm highlighting for our listeners, because there's going to be a lot of aspiring young bodybuilders that, that see themselves in you. And I want to make it clear that you had a ton of proof of concept before you decided to start that journey. I was selling hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of supplements and I was selling hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of apparel. Before you said, oh, and, and on this case for the supplement side, you weren't like, it wasn't until then that you were like, I'm going to do my own. But, and, but also, how, you know, talk about your, how your personal brand tied in with that. How many videos had you done up and down? Oh, how point? much creation we, had you? Yeah, yeah, we were, we were pumping out content that was actually valuable, relevant content at that point that was actually like, this is, this is a real thing. It wasn't a joke. People were bought in whenever we would drop a new shirt, we'd sell out. Mm -hmm. We're selling hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of apparel. It's like, holy fuck, this is nuts. And then whenever we do anything with supplements, whenever you, and whenever I decided to stop working with Primeval and I was like, we're doing my, I'm doing my own thing. It was like they, the contract that was offered to me was extensive. It was, they were like, we really can't, can't, we can't we, lose you. We yeah. don't want to lose you. And, and, and it was like, I, I have to leave. There's no amount of money that can keep me here. Right. Unless you're just giving me the equity of the company. And it and, doesn't even worth entertaining. And, but it was also like, it was just, I was like, holy fuck, I'm at this point in my life. This is uh, life changing. This is, this is heavy shit. Let's not fuck this up. And, uh, but it was, yeah, it was very real. And uh, it's still a wild was, ride, but there's. What was product one? What was product one for? Uh, we had uh, so me, we. I'm a non-stim pre-workout guy. 
I was like, who the fuck takes non-stim? What, what do you mean? Everybody loves stimulants. I'm like, I like the pump. I like fucking, you know, that. So it was uh, fuel pump, which hydraulic. Hydraulic. Used to, hydraulic, be, yeah. used to be called fuel pump. And then we had ignition switch, which was the a, a stimulant pre-workout that could be stacked with mm -hmm. fuel pump. We sold a lot of that ignition switch. Uh, demo day, the grind, and then yeah. double time. So those were, our, those were our products, our five products that we came out with uh, to start. Fuel pump, uh, we got sued by uh, P... PFC, I think, is the brand name. You, would, I mean, you oh think? no, PMD, 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 yeah. PMD Labs, and they uh, GNC brand. Yeah, and yeah. they had this. Uh, it's a they had a product franchises called, only. Yeah, they called it pump fuel, pump fuel, pump fuel platinum yeah. pump fuel. And I was like, "Fuck, I didn't know." Mm -hmm. But whenever that happened, I was but like, "You called it fuel pump." Yeah, six months later, after being in the brand, whenever we started like just fucking exploding, I was like. Oh uh, no, we got to change the name. And we're like, I'm like, what the fuck? We're like, fight him. And we're like, we don't have the money to fight a fucking company that's been around. Right. No, yeah, they're <laughs> trying to bleed you out. Yeah. Their, pre their president lives here in Kansas City if you want to talk to him. That's, that's okay. <laughs> we, but then it turned out like hydraulic. So now, whenever yeah. we were like, let's call it hydraulic. And it's like, ah. Oh. And it turned out to be just fine and everything worked out. Well, I'll tell you right now, as soon as these icy I, flavors it, you did, especially that hydraulic, man, it would, that was doing the ICs was a, a great collaboration at that time to just, it just, are any of these well, cold? Crack me one of these right now, dude. I'm so I'm, I dude. You got to get the Give cream the, soda. All of our guys. No, so, dude. That new glacier. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, that glacier is the shit. The, the oh, is glacier. Yeah. I love that one too. But I'm saying this blue icy. If it's is it chilled still? Yeah. yeah all of them the, are cold. I just I mean this, the cream soda. This is great. We selling the most cream soda right now. Great cream soda is uh, cream soda is the flavor that is hot right. There's now. very few out there like it though. You know, no one else is trying on the. Yeah, because it's side. easy to fuck up. <laughs> really, it's really hard. Uh, who was uh, ah fucking Doug Miller? Uh, they had their. Uh, this is so fucking good, dude. And so people like the, they prefer the blue over the uh, cherry. Well, I think, I think Blue Raz IC is the best selling IC, regardless of, you know, being partnered with anybody. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, I haven't undefeated. tried it's, un <laughs> it's undefeated. I mean, wow. you, I mean, like, I think if you're going to the movie theater or whatnot, it's Blue Raz IC, and then they use like the Minute Made yep. branding for the cherry. And it's just not even close. And the white cherry was pretty good growing up. I don't see that shit anymore. Ever. No, I haven't maybe, seen that. Maybe, years. maybe bring that back. You know what I'm saying? Just a little, just a little, uh, maybe for the future. A Come white, on, bring back dude. the white cherry, dog. Waterfall that. All right, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, to water, tell me to waterfall it again, Kyle. Now I gotta <laughs> fucking burn it. <laughs> have you, <laughs> burn it. <laughs> have you seen the thing of peop, of other guys feeding each other and then sticking their finger in their mouth? <laughs> no. Yeah, dude. I don't know what, what's that look like. Just show me. You got any food? <laughs> so they, they would be like, they'll have something. They'll be like, oh, here, eat this. <laughs> like, uh, like it's just like, oh, try this. They'll put it up and they're like, okay. And they and like they're film. Somebody's filming it yeah. from there, and then they go to eat it, and like they quick move their finger and put their finger in their mouth. They're like, dude. Like it's authentic because this of the reaction. Hundred percent what he would do to me, yeah. and I would, dude. When me and Jeff, he's just easy to fuck. Hey, with. listen, oh, listen. Yeah. When we yeah. when we first started, when we opened, oh, it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Have you guys seen the stink palm? Have you guys done that before? Hold on, hold on. Right, when sorry, when me and on. Jeff, when me and Jeff opened in Kansas City in 2016, we were we took every single transaction. We had no other employees. We were literally working together 24 seven. I saw him way more than I saw my wife. And he was he had Lucky him. he yeah. had freaking uh, Invisalign <laughs> at this time, and I would come back from taking a transaction up front. Mind you, I'm fucking tired. I'm literally, you know, we're taking so many transactions. We're working, you know, 85 hours a week. And I come back to get on my computer and on my computer keyboard, his Invisalign would be on my computer <laughs> keyboard. You just pop them out. I'd literally just take them and throw them in the trash. I was just like, dude. You've so never disgusting. once threw those in the trash. Let's be real. I didn't. But my I my teeth are still it. straight as shit, Kyle. Yeah, nice try. It. But uh, this, you, all right, so this is a real like deep cut if you know this comedy. Do you remember the movie? Ready to Rumble with David Arquette. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. The opening scene. It was so good that Dumb and Dumber 2, which let's sad, let's sad, let's not really, like really bring that movie up, but they stole it completely from the beginning of Ready to Rumble. No shit. From the stink palm. He yeah, because he'd, he'd, he'd stick it in there and then he was like, he's hey. like, dude, I'm already done with this slushy. He's like, I'm going to get a free one. He's like, how do you do that? He's like, hold on. Sticks his hand up his ass completely, right? <laughs> completely up his ass. Yeah. Pulls it out and it's like, boom. When he pulls it out, grabs an ice, and he's like, dude, there's something wrong with this slushy, man. I need another one. He's, he's like, what do you mean? my ass. He's like, ass. smell that. He's like, do you smell that slushy? 
And he's like, and the guy was so good. The guy that had the actor, he's like, dude, I will get you another one ASAP. I am so sorry. He's like, let me get you another one right now. I'm so sorry. And Dumb and Dumber 2, fucking Jim Carrey used it. That exact scene is oh, in shit. Dumb and Dumber 2. I was like, did no one see Ready to Rumble? It wasn't that bad. Like, That was a pretty funny movie. Ready to Rumble was awesome. Yeah, man. My brother get, and I love that movie. Didn't get enough credit, especially because they used some real WWE guys in that yeah. movie. They, they are coming out with Happy Gilmore, too, which I'm pretty pumped about. I see that. I know they said the line for the extras was wrapped around a convention center yeah. twice. Yeah. It's awesome. Apparently, Travis wait. Kelsey got in. Shout out Kansas City there. Yeah. Travis Kelsey's yeah. in it already. He's everywhere. He can do what he wants at this point. Okay, so... You were, you were, um, you're, you're now you're thinking about creating supplements and as you're going through like the process, it's not as glamorous. I'm sure as everybody all thinks you get, you get given tons of options on flavors. What is one that you were like fucking so excited about? And it just doesn't land with well, people. We, um, uh, I, I take the, the flavor thing really serious. Like with, with all the technology within supplements, like just don't fuck it up. If people are going to spend 40 to $50 on your product, one product's 40 to $50. Don't fuck up the flavor. At least make it enjoyable for people. You know what I mean? Just at least make it fun for people. And every, like you said, everybody wants to start a supplement company, and I love it. It's awesome. And you, I don't ever discourage anybody to uh, go after anything that they want to do. However, just be very real with yourself. I was real with myself when I was like, hey, we're making, a, I'm, th I'm selling a fuckload of stuff. I think we can do this if we do it right and if we actually take the time to do things. And, uh, but from uh, uh, the flavor standpoint, I've always taken it super serious. Like all, I wanted uniqueness. I just didn't want to call something like rainbow sherbet. That's where unicorn blood came from. Yeah. Like we should name it something fucked up. Like, cause it'd be more fun for people. Yeah. So that's where like deadlifts and gummy bears, shark bite, unicorn blood, all these different things came from. And it worked. It worked really well. And we were the company that was like, I was like, we should do whenever you look at a brand, like how are what are you going to be known for? How are you going to do your brand? And for me, I was like, I want my personality to come through the product. I want it to be a quality product with unique ingredients and a great formula and work. But then I want there to be a little bit of a fuckery because I'm just a fuckery type of guy. Big that, melons. Big melons. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's where I wanted it to come in. Big melons, yeah. big cherries, unicorn blood. Like that's not typical of what was going on at that time. And we decided to do a full flavor commit to labels. We were starting to say, Let, let's fully commit the label to the flavor rather than to the brand. Right. The Axe and Sledge is synonymous with, with Seth Ferrosi of All-American Roughneck. Like that's where the Axe and Sledge originated in All-American Roughneck and we were thinking of names for the company. I was like, those are the two hardest working tools I know. Mm -hmm. Like you swing an Axe and you swing a sledgehammer all day long every for eight hours, you're not gonna forget that motherfucker. And then you gotta do it the next day. And the next day you're like, fuck that sledgehammer. That thing sucks. Yeah. So that, and I was like, I'm just known. I just will work hard no matter what. Say the ax and the sledgehammer, that's why we put it on AAR. And with ax and sledge, I was just like, I just keep seeing that. I don't know what else to call it. We couldn't come up with it. So that's where it came from the name. And I was like, so we'll always have that front and center, but the, uh, the, flavor. the flavor commits mm -hmm. is what I said for the labels because then I was like, it'd be fun. And whenever you pull it out of your gym bag, you'll be like, hmm, it's pretty fucked up. This is awesome. Look how cool this looks. And then people like taking a picture and putting it on social media. Mm -hmm. That's where the full I think I know what the flavor is the far label. away without even having to read well, it I mean, because of that. I, I don't know if anybody's done this yet, but like your uh, farm fed that was like elf, yeah. uh, you know, it was like referencing a movie and it was, you know, pancakes and syrup from the movie that yeah. he loved, you know, that was, that was so people have done, you know, the icy thing, which you guys might've been one of the first I've seen to do this. You or ghost where it was like, they, actual they weren't, they weren't, yeah, they weren't co-brand like ghost co-branded for sure with the, with the different brands. But I'm saying that like, See, they, like, were, they were calling it slush or yeah. you know, we they, got they weren't in. actually calling icy. Well, Ghost made it pop. Ghost started the whole, they were the first to do the collab. Sonic yeah. Cherry Lime, I believe, is the first branded. And they did, yeah. and they've done a tremendous job of it. And, you know, in this industry, I'm very, I very strongly believe in giving credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. uh, because, again, this industry is not easy to do things in. In order to make something happen for a company, dude, it takes a lot of work. So, you know, with Ghost and having and them doing the first collab, it's like, great. They were the first to do it. They did it really well. They opened up the doors possible for all the other brands to start working. Because if if you if your brand is built on collaborations, you're going to be in some trouble. Yeah. Like down the road at some point, it's going to stop working because to do that, that's not free. Yeah. You pay royalties. Mm -hmm. To do a collaboration, you have to pay royalties back to that company to have that logo on your fucking, on your 
No doubt, the trademarked IC brand, right yeah, there. So we all know it. We recognize yeah, it. Yeah, and that, and that's, and and so uh, with Ghost, it made it possible, and all the other brands that do something cool, it's like, hey, if someone does a good job with someone, something, I'm, I'll be the first to be like, you did a really good fucking job on it, mm-hmm. because it's like, why wouldn't you it's, say that? It's wild though, because it's like, dude, for a decade, everybody and their mom was going like Starburst, B E R S T, and yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, was it the entire ISO Amino line from Man Sports? Just like ten fucking. Well, they actually got in trouble. It wasn't remember? nerds; we, it was geeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'll get, you'll get, you'll, eventually, yeah. they're going to be like, "Hey, dickheads!" Yeah, yeah. we know what you're you doing. Cut the fucking bullshit. Yeah, I would we like, know I would what like you're to doing. go out and say that that's probably trying to mimic something we all know. Oh, you know, it, and it's and it's the originality, and I take a lot of pride in that, making sure that we we do these, but also uh, like uh, like helping the team understand, like, hey, make it your own. Like with the with uh, Elf, whenever we did the labels, it's like we want to tell a story. You want to tell the story from the movie. You want to be a full commit, make the whole label cool. It's only for a little bit of time of the year, so just make it fun. Make it so much fun that people can't help but want to buy it. Yeah, and uh, they did. A, the team did a tremendous job. Of Shit, doing that. I see it on my order sheet, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, that's cool." Yeah, but it, it, and, S- same it, thing with like the Dippin' Dots. I imagine you just like being out with your kids and being like, "We should make a Dippin' Dots flavor." That, but again, with all of it, it it eventually. I mean, the reality is, is there is a royalty that has to be paid, and then eventually, it's like, is it cool anymore? Yeah, is it worth it to do these things anymore? Sure. Because if you're paying a certain percentage, if you're paying four percent, if you're paying six, hey, don't put that up there. I was just kidding. You can leave that. You <laughs> put it back up there. That's another one to talk about. Uh, but, uh, Did you get so in trouble for this we one? Got in deep, we got in deep <laughs> shit for that one. What's that supposed to look like? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. That's that a nice, a, original looking that's label. Original like, label. It's got to come from you, I know. And that's what I was getting at with all the collabs was uh, you want to be able to do something original. Like get your team to, uh, like all the stuff that we do do now with all the new flavors that we have, be original. Yeah. Like you guys bring your creativity to life. Don't give me a little piece of you from the creative team. I'm like, give me all of you. Give me something fucked up. Give me anything that you think would be cool because you are a part of this. And our label team has done a tremendous job. Like s'mores, marshmallow milk, all of those flavors are original. They're original done by our design team in house. Uh, the, yeah, the That's name. a big leaf, bud. Got, well, Congratulations. <laughs> They did that just for me. Uh, You're like, but, dude, that leaf's got to be bigger. Blow that up. Blow the knees. I'll, I'll, seriously blow the knees fi- at least. I'll fire you guys. <laughs> but uh, but the, the the Jack Daniels thing's funny. We, uh, we're we big Jack Daniels fans. You know, you like Jack and diets. And uh, whenever we weren't a big company, whenever we did that, we were like, fuck it. Let's do just, we did a shirt for uh, for the Arnold Classic. And it was a Jack Daniels logo because we were just mimicking it. And it was cool. And it was what we're into. And we're an edgy brand. Done by a hundred other brands in their lives, yeah, right? we liked it. Uh, but then we decided to try a whiskey cola flavor. We're like, let's see if we could do it. Well, it turned out to be fucking delicious. Mm-hmm. And then we were like, all right, let's just take the fucking T-shirt that we did and put, put it, it on the can. There. Yeah, yeah. It yeah there it is. Yeah, Easy. we did it for the, it was for the 2019 Arnold. It was awesome. It was a hit. Fucking A. Well, guess what? <laughs> so we started selling a lot of whiskey cola supplements. And then whiskey cola became a fucking huge flavor in Australia. Huge. And it was everywhere in Australia. Well, that's how it ended up trickling back. No and then shit. we got it. We got a We got an email from Jack Daniels. Just became saying, too popular. Hey guys, yeah. <laughs> hello. We you know can't what you're do doing. This. Yeah. And we're yeah. like, wait a minute. Why are we getting in trouble? Just Google and you'll see all these other people doing it. Yeah. Well, then we uh, we they were the only ones that did the brand exact on the on the front as they, far as the the I would say like the tribute to to the Jack. No, Daniels there's brand. a million fucking brands that do it. There's a million. They we just were in the limelight a little bit, and their legal team decided to pay us a a couple you know emails, and we were like, hey, sorry about that. And they're like. Cut it the fuck out. We're big fans. No, yeah. we said cut it out. Can we do a collaboration together? We'd love to work with you guys. How about you fucking stop? <laughs> All right. You got it, like, guys. Thanks. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Uh, lo and behold, they have Who would do that? I can't believe you guys did that. Uh, I don't know if you see the Missouri domination, but we uh, we have yet to get that call. We've had that shirt since 2010. I do but, like the fucking A, though. Yeah. But, you but know? It was the fucking A is cooler, to be fair. It, it's, uh, I don't know, dude. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, that was a, that was a good time. You're rehired, Luke, from that joke. Good we job, were, dude. We were a little worried for a minute because they were. We sold a lot of it, a lot. I'd still love yeah, a collaboration they, but with them. To, yeah. answer, to go back to the original question, is there a flavor that your team tried that you were like, we were all pumped about it. We like, you know, we got it back and it just like didn't land. But you were excited about the potential of it coming out to public and it hasn't. There's yet. always something that does well that I didn't expect, or one that will not perform as well. Uh, the one flavor that just pops out in my mind is Swamp Beast. So it was like this green apple flavor. 
and I'm not a big green apple flavor. It's a bit uh, like uh, apple berry. Green apple berry was the flavor. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, this tastes like absolute dog shit. <laughs> I was like, this is terrible. I lost. Like, it was like seven to one. Everybody else is like, dude, this is crazy unique. You gotta and I'm, do like, it. Yeah. I'm like, this flavor sucks. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, we put a cool name on it and a cool logo and everything, and everybody's crazy about it. And people were like, "Was it a Halloween release too? Like around that time, or was it just uh, like fucking?" I think it February, was just something. You know I mean? Yeah, I don't remember exactly when, but then it started working, and then it was like always mediocre. It was a mediocre performer, and then uh, we were. It was a topic one day, and I'm like, because we were ranking grind flavors, and I was like, "This flavor just fucking blows." <laughs> I was like, "I don't even know why we do it." I said it publicly. I was like, "I fucking hate this flavor." We sold a shitload of it after that. <laughs> we sold, I was like, I gotta try how shitty this stuff is. I was yeah. like, wait a minute. I just told everybody how much this thing sucks. And now we just sold a ton of it. And people were like, I love it. And people well, like, there is kind of that, you know, where you get some, I mean, dude, as lifters, everyone's kind of screwed up in the head. They're like, oh, it tastes bad. I kind of like that. That kind of makes me more hardcore, you know? For yeah, uh, go. another one of these, these are one of my favorite questions. Before you're a lover of supplements, before you started making your own, give me your Mount Rushmore of your all time favorite supplements to take. Oh, man. And they can't be made by Axe and Sledge at this point. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, Mount Rushmore of supplements that aren't my own before, you know, just through the whole thing. Andrew Poppers on. <laughs> yeah, Andrew Poppers are on it for sure. Uh, but I'd probably say the non stim pre workout that changed everything was EVP. Before when it, you know 2009, I'm getting a case of EVP that is not able to be bought anywhere except from Hani. Like yeah. selling it to his, he was just selling it to his clients. So it in was 2009, awesome. was he loading it up with glycerol? Like I remember that I, that, that was he's the only one that, that did 10 grams. But that was strong. not was that, at that time. I don't think that people were using it. It was and, just arginine and agmatine in, at that time. Yeah. Like no one was putting glycerol in anything at the time. It seemed like there were no labels on my containers. <laughs> <laughs> You get a different uh, container. Dude, I think this is different than the last one was, I got. And it was back then when there was, was only one flavor. It was unflavored, actually. Grape. Oh, yeah. that was, there was only one flavor that dude did, and it was grape everything. And he I was probably like, it's it. grape, and you're going to have to appreciate that because it's not changing. That for, was, all, for all of our listeners, dude, if you took supplements before 2010, they usually just dyed it red and called it fruit punch. Yes. So this was nice that it was grape. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was a unique. Everything was just fucking red. It was a unique tinge of a flavor. That you were like, mm, what is that? Some it's got grape in there, and I like it. Yeah. Because uh, and it, but things have evolved so much, like with the technology of flavoring things and masking flavors. But I'd probably say EVP as in the pre workout category. Um, Andro poppers, we'll put that in the in the steroid category. Fat burner, <sighs> stacker twos. Oh stacker damn! Two. Whenever stacker twos were real, yeah. like they were this is ignorant. like two thousand two, two thousand one shit. Those yeah. would those would take fat off of any human being on the fucking planet. Is it like a classic ECA stack? I like, think I think they're illegal to two thousand five. I mean, like the gas stations had this fucking you I, know like the 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 new version that had the you know a, um, like what would you call you, it? You you wanted the ephedra. You it wasn't put, ephedra. It was called like ephedrin. Two, yeah, you yeah. Know, put whatever. like two thousand four. Sack or two, twos, and yeah. that's the real shit there. It was like right. Remember yellow jackets? Yeah, Same it was kind oh, of era. Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, there it was, you go. Stacker two, the yellow hornets. Yeah, I mean they were ruthless. They were taking fat off of you no matter what. Uh, because I just remember my sister. She was a heavier set woman. She ate those things and like she lost a ton of weight. And all she did was just stop eating some bad food and took that. Dear God, uh, a, this is a golden and then, era. Uh, now okay, I got those. I don't want to screw this up. I didn't have time to prepare, but I'll take this. So EAS Myoplex, Myoplex packets yeah. were the shit. They were one of the first things I ever bought. Chocolate? I, yep. Oh, yeah. 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 There was only, you only got three chocolate. Yeah, chocolate, vanilla, chocolate strawberry. vanilla, strawberry. It was. <laughs> Bro, Myoplex yeah, original. I love it. Hey, when we got the job, we like, we first walked in our original store. We had the EAS Body for Life sticker on the window. Like they made their, they made, like that's how Andy and Chris got started. It was nothing but the Body for Life challenge with Bill Phillips. Oh, dude, it was huge. He was, he, he what, what, what EAS did was, I mean, it was. They were the first to, to do certain things. A sports supplement company that, like, your mom took. And yes. it was just, like, unheard of. And then it somehow made its way into the meathead realm. Mm -hmm. like it was the, it was basically everybody, you know, yes. which is was good. I mean, can, I mean, Bill Phillips, God, when it comes to marketing. I mean, <laughs> it unbelievable, awesome. dude. It was, 
he could, mean, he had, he had, everybody, you know, the the EAS, builders, everybody was drinking the, the EAS mile plexus. Remember they were the first like cardboard carton, yeah, yeah. you know, drink. And then they also had the packets and yep. it was like, they also had like 24 seven customer service, which Andy used to always bring up EAS as like the brand that he would bring up because of how well they actually wanted to be a legacy brand. Mm-hmm. It was never a get rich quick brand. They no. were like, we want you to love it. We want you to take it for life. And that's something that, that's something that, uh, again, whenever you're talking about building a supplement company, what are you going to do? Because every Tom, Dick and Harry thinks that they're, <laughs> look at that. Hold on back le- uh, left side of the windows, right, right there. Look to the left of the door yep. right there. There it is. There it is. EAS body for life partner. And, and, and everybody that's with seven pounders for 30 bucks right there in the middle. <laughs> that's real talk. Man, seven even, pounders, even, bro. Even Ooh. 10 years ago, 10 years ago, protein. Cause I was always like, I would never spend more than 40 bucks on a protein. 220s like that's how i looked at it you know just whenever we started axe and sledge with farm fed like i was like oh yeah it should be it should be 220s and that's how i was buying like if i was a blue collar guy 220s yeah now bro, protein is so expensive from a manufacturing standpoint it's unfucking disgusting godly. everything you know, has gone disgusting. up it's crazy protein on believable on the, yeah unbelievable and that's again it goes back to like everybody thinks that they're going to start a supplement company and sell it for a hundred million dollars i'm like hey how many supplement companies have sold for $100 million or more in the past 10 years? Uh, can you name more than one? I don't know any, actually. I, I Off the top of my head, there's probably a few, but we're talking like... You're, oh, yeah, bars. Um, sold for $600 million. Yeah, that, that... Quest Nutrition, billion. But those aren't those real are snackable. Those, those are, are snacks. Those are, those are functional foods. Uh, okay. Those are functional foods that were sold at the right time at the peak of their sales. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they were purchased by a certain brand that was able to take what they were doing and take it to the next level. They were at peak times. They knew when to sell, how to sell at the right time. There is, there are, there are shout or, out our boy, Ron from one brands. There <laughs> are points in your brand that are the right time to sell. If you are peaking, don't try and ride the lightning of your peaking. If you are just mm-hmm. reaching your peak of what you believe to be the peak and you have the opportunity to sell, that's when you would sell. Because if you try to like, oh, I'm at peak now. Well, you're not going to sell tomorrow. To sell a brand takes a year. Yeah, at tons least sixteen of, tons months. Of, tons of BS. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're not going like, hey, oh, you said that yeah. your your PL private- looks like this. Oh, that looks great. They're this like pri- private equity firms. Like, oh, dude, you're good for it. Here's yeah. a check. Yeah, I don't need to turn your company completely inside out. Yeah. You know, and give you a rectal exam. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to spend half a million dollars on on auditors to look through everything. Yeah, uh, I won't do that. Yeah. Our producer uh, Thatcher wanted to ask: Are you? Uh, is it true you're fifty percent vegan? Yes, yes, I am fifty percent vegan, twenty uh, percent natural, ten um, percent superhero. <laughs> so no, the fifty percent vegan thing is just me being a jerk. Off. That's a good shirt. Oh yeah, that is a pretty sure. good point is that a though. Shirt? It's like yeah, I mean, is that a shirt? everyone's fifty yeah. oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I did it because whenever I was, uh, I tore my tricep and I got bad blood work back, and you know, my doctor was like, "Hey, dickhead, I think it's time to hang it the fuck up." Like, you can't just take steroids and not compete. I was like, but Instagram. You know, <laughs> He's like, no, dude, it's time to be done. If you're not going to fucking compete, clean your shit up. You're done. Yeah. You got three kids. You got a beautiful fucking family. You got a company that's killing it. Clean it up. And he was like, I was like, what do I do? Like, I'm all nervous. I just tore my tricep. And he's like, well, he's like, first, let's get your hormones under control. And he's like, you got to change your eating habits. And I'm like, what's wrong with my eating? He's like, it's in your blood work, dickhead. Like, you got to eat better. He's like, how much red meat are you eating? I'm like, uh, all of it. It's like a good bit. Every and he's meal. Like, he's like, how many times a week? And I'm like, uh, 14. He's <laughs> like, no, you're done. He's like, you're going to eat fit. You're going to go on a Mediterranean diet. You're going to eat fish, vegetables, chicken, some fruits. You're going to cut back on your carbs. I'm like, bro, I'll be, I'm 50% vegan at that point. He's like, yes. <laughs> so that's where it all came from. So I, I, and it, it changed my life and that's how I became lean. But I was like, all right, I'm going to make a joke out of this and I get to eat red meat once a week. And that sucks. Is but, this uh, when you started running too and mm-hmm. doing more? Yeah. Functional like, I remember stuff. started, I, I'd scroll through Instagram and you'd be on a treadmill and I'm like, what's, actually running. I'm like, yeah, whoa, happened? what the hell? Yeah. Cause it sucked. I was pissed. <laughs> I was like all of a sudden, like my hopes and dreams of ever competing, even though I wasn't competing and I was just being a fucking dickhead, I should have competed and I wasn't because you definitely could. I mean, you still could compete right now, but <laughs> so that's where it comes back to now. Cause at that point back then in 2020, I tore my tricep and I was like, he's like, Hey dude, you gotta clean it up. You gotta get your health under control, all that. So I did all that and it took a while, 
before my blood work came back and I was like very pleased with how it looked. It took about a year to be like, good to go. Uh, my, my resting heart rate was under control. My resting heart rate was high. My blood pressure was high. Everything that could have been high was high because I was just running gear, being huge for Instagram, selling as much shit as I could, just being wild fuck. <laughs> and then, then I was like, all right, so cleaned it all up, started getting more. Yeah, there's a tricep tear. Uh, but I got then I got into really good shape. Uh, I started eating better, and I eat a salad for dinner every single day of my life. I have a salad at night. Do you get to put chicken on it or anything? Oh yeah, I, have, oh I put I tonight. Put, you'll have a meat salad because you're in Kansas City. I know that's yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> but it took me it took me yeah. that long. It took me years to get to the point where I'm like, okay, now I'm in a spot where my resting heart rate's under sixty beats per minute. At one point, you know, fifty two beats a minute. Like that's fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, okay, I really miss competing. That was one thing. Like people, the regrets start coming in because I'll be forty this year, and it's like, hey. Do you, people always ask, do you regret like not competing? And I'm like, yes, motherfucker. <laughs> Absolutely, I do. If there's one thing I wish I did, would have did more was, it would have been competing. Yeah. So uh, just recently, I was like, okay, I'm turning 40. Let's see if I still have it. So earlier this year, I hopped on a little more test. It was the first time I started taking more tests and more growth hormone, uh, probably from February to May. I was like, I want to see if I still got it. Let's see. And I was like, all right. Just don't do anything too stupid. And, you know, within the first two weeks, I'm like, man, I haven't bought Trent in a while. I wonder what it looks like. And I'm like, <laughs> Seth, pump the brakes. You're, you're, just, you're just taking a little more test. Yeah. And then I ended, up, I ended up putting on size, and I was like, fuck, dude, I think I, my body could still handle it. But, and, uh, and that's whenever everybody's like, hey, dude, like, you're back on some shit. And I'm like, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I <laughs> Glad you to, noticed. Uh, thank you for I was, noticing. I was hoping you did. But they, but again, that goes back to that people think that I'm lying about everything. They're, you know, the haters. And they'll be like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm seeing if I still have it because I'm 40 and I know. Yeah. So so t tell us, what uh, you know, 26 weeks. Does that, obviously an IFBB pro card is something you have to renew, right? Yeah. So if you, if you competed again. Yeah. I just turn it back on. You turn it back. Turn so would I could, you, I, you, I, could, you could go right into a pro mm -hmm. IFBB pro, yeah, pro yeah. show. Yep. Dude, do it. I know everybody. Will, that's that's the thing. And but um, uh, I like to think that I still have it. You know, uh, that's something that I was going to talk to Hani about because whenever we trained together in Mexico earlier this year, I was talking to him. I was like, hey, I was like, I was like, I need you to be like, yeah, you still have it. Yeah, we were training together. He's like, he's like. I was like, should I, I want to come down and see you, see if I still have it, if uh, if you think that I would still be able to do this. And, uh, you know, then everything with the company this year exploded to what it is and awesome. And uh, everything that's happened recently at home with taking care of Hannah, she had uh, a couple surgeries. So it's now it's like things kind of got a little worked up, but uh, and I didn't get the chance to go see him. But it's still lingering in my head because I turned 40 and I don't want to. When's the birthday? November. So next year might be a time whenever I like decide to dabble back into it, but we'll see. Cause you the, should, co man. the companies Bro. take a lot. The companies no. take a lot and, uh, it'd be, it'd be a, it'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but you know, keeping everything in check and knowing that my health is good now and it's a lot of fun. I'm grateful for it. But well, honey, when he was on our podcast, he was talking about just basically the health protocol. He's, he started to put people on post yes. show and it seems like it's a big focus for him. You know, yeah. I mean, obviously, it, with with everything that's happened serious. in the bodybuilding industry in the last five years with the people, you know, um, pushing too hard, and it, you know, <laughs> what I'm saying, like, I think it's just become more top of mind for people that are at the highest level. Well, so. people, people, uh, I, I made crazy videos, my truck rants, and truck rants are, I do them whenever I am fired the fuck up and whacked out on caffeine <laughs> to like say some ruthless wild <laughs> shit that'll grab people's attention but also like there's a lot of truth that comes out and there's a lot of emotions and it's done to get people fired up about a certain topic and educate them a little bit in a different way in a different facet but uh i made the one that steroids will kill you and you know it caused a ton of controversy because they're like don't you take steroids i'm like yeah <laughs> How the fuck you think I know the fuck? You're <laughs> what do you mean? Like I'm pretty sure we yeah, all know this. Speaking from the hip here. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not no dummy with this. I might not be a scientist, but then it's like because a lot of people were passing away, and it's like, can we pretend? Can we stop pretending that they won't affect your health? Like they're like, well, there's a right way to do them. I'm like, yes, there is, but if you want to be a big time IFBB pro, 
I'm going to tell you, you're going to push the limits and you're going to push limits that you are going to be uncomfortable with. That's just the nature of this. And you won't have to do it all the time forever because as you know, as I built tissue over decades of training, like I don't have to take nearly the amount I did whenever in 2009, so to say. Sure. It's a different, I'm a different competitor or a different person, but it's like, can we stop pretending that if you take a thousand migs of testosterone, it's not going to do anything to you? It will because your, your, your resting heart rate is going to go up because your muscle mass is going to increase. Okay. You're going to have more red blood cells in your body because that's what testosterone does. Just those simple from a very scratch the surface level of understanding about, about, uh, steroids or testosterone. If that occurs, your resting heart rate goes up and your blood pressure will rise. Guaranteed. If you take an oral steroid, it's going to have an effect on your liver and kidneys. Mm Mm-hmm. No shit, huh? (laughs) Okay. So, because if they didn't, then we wouldn't be having this conversation and have to put people on health protocols. But if you do enough of them improperly for long enough, you're going to have lasting health effect on your body, which could mean if I stress my heart out enough, what could happen? Heart Heart attack. attack. (gasps) No fucking shit. (laughs) You mean the guy that's 48 years old that had a heart attack? Oh, steroids didn't have an effect on it? Hey, bud, (laughs) can we stop pretending? Yeah. Like, and then they're like, well, why would you do it then? Because I like it. Mm -hmm. Because it's something that I chased. It's something that I enjoyed. I went after it because that's what I wanted to do with my life. It's my life and this is what I was going after. And from those crazy things that I did, I was able to create all this great opportunity for my family, my people, the company, for you. That's why you follow me. But then they're like, but you were taking steroids. Okay, that's right. Let's look at this from a uh, another sport. Like nascar i or motocross racing yeah hey Mm -hmm. dude you know you can die doing that i look at that and i'm like that's pretty fucking stupid and then i'm like well they look at me and they're like you're probably pretty fucking stupid you're the people die doing these things they are high risk sports you know the guy that's the lineman that's smashing his fucking head into the in the defensive line all day every day and then he ends up having cte and concussions and all kinds of issues later on in life it's like oh Did you think that wasn't going to happen? But you made millions of dollars, didn't you? And you had all this great stuff and all this wonderful thing that you created opportunity and money for your kids. Or you could not, and you end up with these issues, and nobody knew who the fuck you were, and you didn't make millions of dollars in the NFL. But you were willing to take the risk, weren't you? Mm -hmm. At the time, you did it because you loved it. So who the fuck are you to judge me based on what I want to do? And it's like whenever I made those videos, people were saying all that. I'm like, you are so closed mind that you can't even see past your face or even or even understand that someone is willing to go after something that you can't even conceptualize. Because guess what? You're still watching the fucking show. Mm-hmm. And from a competitor standpoint, guys, you are the circus. You are the fucking animals. That's who we are. Whenever you're a competitor, they're there to watch the show. Give them a fucking show. And understand that as you're doing this, you're putting your health and what you do on the line. So whenever you have the opportunity to make the fucking money, I believe they should get paid. I believe you should go after all those things. If you're willing to take those risks, you should make as much money as you can at those times and make sure that you build relationships that are lasting so that you can continue to make money on it forever. Who does it the best? Jay Cutler. Jay yeah. Cutler, man. Yeah. So like, what the, the crazy thing about circle. that, though, is you oh, see, yeah, you yeah. see yeah. so many people that, that are pushing those limits that just don't even have a shot at being a national level competitor and they don't have a way of making money. And that's the, I guess the part where you're like, maybe just dial it down a bit. <laughs> just right. and it's, it, a bit. And you and want I feel it, like you, it's that guy. It's those fringe, you know, we talked about, you that's know, still the guy that's on there. Like, Hey, so that's not bad. For you. Steroids and baseballs is really great. I want to touch on this because steroids and baseball was a big deal there for a while. Right. They had yeah. Congress involved and shit. Right. And so because our what, government always picks the best things oh, yeah. to be worried about. That's what they should be talking about, right? <laughs> but the bottom line is that it was such a unique thing because they said, like, we're not, like, we're not, if Barry Bonds doesn't take growth hormone and he doesn't take steroids, that guy's in the Hall of Fame, no problem. He had 400 home runs before he even admitted to starting using gear. They said that, like, the people that you're going to see the biggest problems with are those guys that are on the fringe, right? It's that AAA dude that's just trying so hard to try to finally make just enough money just to scratch the surface of that long, lifelong goal he's been working towards. And I feel like in the bodybuilding world, that's what we're not hearing about is just those guys that have been working for 20 years to become a pro 
and they're just trying to think about what else can they need to do, and, and they're starting to get really uh, risky. And and what, what what's occurring right now is is the influencers, the fitness influencers. Yeah, no, uh, not even going to p- compete they're, ever. They're not even <laughs> going to compete ever, and it's like, okay, but they're going to be able to have a social media platform that they could make thousands of dollars a month from, and rather than just start a job where they could make $50,000 a year or 60 or 70 or whatever it would may, may be, you know, to build up to doing so, they're able to make that kind of money, 50 grand, 60 grand, just being an influencer, taking gear, living that life. Now, I'm not judging anybody based on what they want to do. But if you do wild shit, you're not allowed to fucking cry about it when bad things happen to you. Mm. I'm not allowed to sit here and say, but my health was bad. And cry and fucking whine and be like, why would Jesus do this to me? Well, dickhead, maybe you shouldn't have took a bunch of stuff and fucked yourself up. Because I know for a fact that, guess what? I'm probably going to die before I should have because of the crazy things that I did. I'm not allowed to cry when bad shit happens to me because of the things I did. But I am going to enjoy my life now for what it is. So with these young fitness influencers, it's like, hey, they can do whatever they want. But just understand, you're not allowed to point the finger at steroids. It's your dumb ass for saying this is a good idea. You can't, you can't get mad at, you're not allowed. And that's what a lot of people do now because they need someone to blame because there's too, they're too uncomfortable to admit that they kind of did some dumb shit. You gotta be the victim or the martyr. Yeah. Or, Cause it's always easy to play the victim card with it. But I think that the scary thing is for these young influencers that don't know enough. I knew whenever I was 19, almost 20 years old, whenever I first started taking testosterone or first started taking steroids that I knew that I was going to shut my natural production off. I was going to fuck my body up and it was not going to be good. I knew that, but that was the risk I was willing to take to achieve the thing I wanted to achieve. I knew that one day later in life, I would be dependent on steroids because I read that in the books about steroids. They're like, you're going to fuck this up. And I'm like, all right, that's okay. Mm-hmm. What do you mean that's okay? You're, you're, what, the, what do you mean? You're going to fuck your body up for life. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I want to be an IFBB pro and I want to compete. And I was like, they're like, you might not ever have kids. I'm like, hmm, I don't need kids. <laughs> so I was like, fuck it all. Let, somehow I turned out to have three, you know, it didn't end up the way I thought it would. But it was like, you, you, if you, you know these things, you're not allowed to complain later. Hey, steroids can cause acne. Yep, don't care. How do you feel about student loan payback? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, I mean, that's what's so crazy. So uh, uh, I just see, you know, whether you want to compete or whether you want to do this, I don't care what you want to do with your life. I just don't want to hear you fucking cry when things don't go your way. Yeah. Because things didn't go my dude, way. Dude, dude, dude. People don't cry online. That never happens. <laughs> yeah. People don't whine and bitch in the comment section. You know, and, and never. again, but it's whenever you whenever you dive into these controversial topics, and I love them because I'm like, at the end of the day, I, I know what this is because I've already done everything. Anything dumb that you could do, I pretty much did. Yeah. I'm just that asshole. I'm stubborn. I'm not good with authority. I'm not good with people in certain positions or trying to get me to do something. I'm a very spiteful dickhead about certain topics. So like, it's always fun for me to do it. But I just, I don't know, this topic in particular, I'm like, dude, let's, let's cut the fucking bullshit, guys. It's, it's okay. If you take steroids, it's cool. Have fun. Do whatever you want to. But bad things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. What's the last gun you shot? Uh, 20, 20, uh, my 12 gauge He's shotgun. Like, uh, is it an hour ago? I just had to pop. Yeah, whatever. We, we, were, we, were, we were doing, uh, we were doing skeet shooting in the backyard. Yeah. We got clay pigeons. It was fun. Kids were loving it. I love that. Oh, you're big. You're a big you? hunter, aren't you? Uh, you bow, bow hunter? Uh, yeah, I got into it. I love, I love it. I'm yeah. not, uh, I wouldn't consider myself to be a very highly knowledgeable person in it. I love harvesting animals i think it's the coolest thing he showed world. me a bear that you killed yeah it, it awesome. looked like a freaking grizzly bear and he's it, like this is a black bear. just a black like, bear out in idaho those two guys there there's the deer we shot um oh yeah yeah that uh, those two guys that's who i go hunting with that's ryan in the middle and zach on the left phenomenal guys very cool uh yeah they there's the bear Holy shit, man. Black bear, black bear in Idaho. Longest black bear. His first big, first big game animal I ever killed. People were super pissed about it. You bow that one? Or? No, I okay. rifle. We went, we, we, uh, it was the first big game animal I ever hunted. I wanted the experience and Zach was, uh, kind enough to bring that to life. When you harvested the bear, how <laughs> was the, cool. how was flavor? How uh, it's you try? very gamey. Yeah. Very gamey. Not, I, I enjoy, uh, I, am all for any experience in life. I want to totally. I want to go and just do things that are unique in life and experience things and go into other people's worlds where I am uh, 
very elementary and in this particular uh, setting in hunting, big game hunting, mountain hunting. Oh, it is a wild place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love shooting bows. Love so you it. got a bunch of shit for that, for posting that picture? Oh, dude, killing a bear? Yeah, everybody is like, what are you doing killing a bear? Like, people think it was for sport. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, it's hunting, number one. Number two, I'm harvesting and eating it. Yeah. I'm going to eat the bear. Like, we made a ton of sausage with it. It is uh, crazy, though, your whole brand. You, you, you would think that, like, I mean... You didn't think you I was going to kill a bear? It bring, <laughs> killing a bear or killing an animal, dude, is going to bring out a whole different I, I just posted. Every time. We, I, went, I went on a gator hunt a couple of weeks ago. Nice. I just posted a gator that we killed. And, uh, How big? Hey, like 300 pounds, right? It was big and it was, big and it was 10 foot. Huge. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. So it would be, oh, was, like would this be a crocodile later. or would this be an alligator? Brother, a crocodile is only in like uh, Africa. And really? In, in, in Australia. Well, I'm learning. Holy shit. Yeah. Right. Oh, you got, so you got cool. the, you got not a, not a single negative uh, comment though because I guess I'm just that much of a hillbilly. And all three thousand of his followers. Were also, just not, about it. All, <laughs> also <laughs> just not very popular. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun. I like that. Like that. Look at the gift. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <A> pair of boots. <laughs> that's Kyle that's, Cochran. That's one of our. That's one he, of our team. He works in our uh, Lee Summit. Guy. He works in Lee Summit. Good guy. Uh, pair of boots. Dude, pair of boots so inbound fun. though. So fun. You're man. getting a pair of boots. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, I, I freaking love hunting. That's why I, he, when he showed me that, I was like, I wish you to, I wish this whole event was a, a month later. Me go duck hunting. I, that's what I so may, primarily do is waterfowl. He's hunting. got, he's got the setup. Dude. Yeah. Oh, really? Duck oh, hunting yeah. setup of setups. You come back to Kansas City. I would like to come back. They to say the uh, Pennsylvania of the uh, Midwest. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> the sky is so, black around November here. <laughs> just know. Bro, I am, I oh, man, I have yeah. not gone duck hunting yet. Oh, nice. Bro. I've not gone duck we hunting. We slam, dude. I would. Uh, I went dove hunting down in Georgia. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So fun. Um, Starts next week here. I really. Uh, I just like the experience, and then I like eating the animal. Camaraderie, man. Yeah, it's fun to sit around with your buddies and talk shit. That's all of our managers. Hey, is Murph gonna have his debut this year, dude? He is. His. Yeah. Uh, he's been training a puppy since it was a little pup, uh, and now it's retrieving everything. I cannot wait to work to settle down for me to get a dog. I want so I want a bird dog very badly. So fun, man. Yeah, the, uh, I spent the last year training my dog, and it's been like one of the most uh, just a fulfilling, reward, rewarding type thing. You oh, know, yeah. it's like you kind of you start out, they can't even listen to you or sit, and then you get them to you know over time. Now it's like you know I can almost get them to do pretty much anything I want them to do. You oh know? yeah, what kind of dog is it? He's just a lab. He's oh, a British nice. lab. Oh, and, British uh, lab, beautiful. Yeah, you're doing beautiful. that like every night. Like I'm saying, like it's almost like cathartic. It I seems like for you because you're just to yourself, just you and the dog, and every single night, yeah, you're I just spend, so, throwing the stuff out for him. I've, I spend 20 minutes a night with him. I have a pond in my backyard, so I'm always like throwing him ducks out in the pond. And no shit, he swims like dude. All he wants to do is swim. Do you have a? Uh, do you kind of have a? Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like a bucket list uh, of animals that you would like to at least the, the hunting experience for. Maybe not even get, but just at least try. Yes. Which what's uh, what's on the top of your list? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> if it, so I, uh, I, I, I my, Zach and Zach and Ryan are just awesome guys, and uh, they are they are they are backcountry archery hunters. So they enjoy. The, the, the work camping and the, the the dude when we went elk hunting we were doing 12 miles a day it's up no and joke. down mountains like if you were not in shape you're fucked yeah. mm -hmm. we we packed out uh the elk that i killed there we packed that thing out look at like it was massive <sighs> and it wasn't even a big elk i mean it was large but it wasn't a it wasn't a uh you know a giant um you know six by six sure but uh when we packed it out like it was a five it was a five mile like four and a half five miles out we are up and down the fucking mountains. If you are not in shape, you are you are not making it. Yeah. So, but they do all that. So I want to do. Uh, I'd really like to do moose in Alaska. Sick moose, caribou, uh, and I would like to hunt uh, brown bear. Those three, mm, yeah. Uh, from have you, done, the, have you gotten a boar before? One of like the pigs, like the helicopter no, uh, shooting. Haven't, shit? haven't done it yet. I I want to. I like uh, to do that too. Uh, then. The, the dude, duck you, hey, listen, dude, come on. This is on brand for you, the most on brand thing. You have to go on a pig hunt and shoot pigs out of a helicopter. Oh, helicopter yeah. dog. I, okay, listen, I am I'm, just doing drive bys. I, I'm <laughs> see, hey, you guys hated the brown bear. Watch me murk out of a helicopter yeah. 50 pigs at one time. Yeah. And here's the thing they want you to. They're yeah. overpopulated so much. Like, yeah. For the love of God, come down here and kill all these fucking pigs. <laughs> I, I, again, the more I get into the outdoors industry and doing those things, uh, it is, it's, 
awesome. I think that, okay, for all the people that give that, that said all that shit about hunting or anything like it, it's like, but you're okay eating the meat you buy at grocery stores. Like there are people that yeah. are so naive to understanding that the anim- the things that they buy at the grocery store were killed, you know, potentially inhumanely, you know, because it's uh, it's mass with produced. the most grotesque living conditions. Yeah, horrible, horrible. Yeah. And they just yeah. don't give a fuck or understand it, and everybody knows they're don't don't hip look behind the curtain. However, yeah. I think the pro- like at a young age, like this year, I'm going to take Emmy hunting with me. And then she's going to witness seeing a live deer and then sh- me shooting it and it being a dead deer, go up close to it and then, you know, slit it open, pull all the guts out. Like her, she's going to experience that and it's going to make you feel a certain way. And it's like, how did you feel from that occurring? How does that make you feel inside? Like it's going to do something to you and you're going to find out, you're going to learn to have a level of respect for nature and that animal. And it doesn't mean that like you don't care about that animal, you're harvesting it. You're going to eat it. And that's why we pray before dinner every night. That's why we say grace. You know, we say grace like those are just traditions or or things that you do in your home to, you know, help gain respect and an understanding for what you're like, what it is. You thank God for the food you're about to eat. That animal had to die in order for you to get that. So you should uh, thank God for it. Genuinely that's, nourishing your body. That's the yes. big thing yeah. is like, you know, within, in our house, my wife has a garden. So it's like my kids help her help with the garden. Sure. You know, the, the, the meat that we eat, you know, is either primarily something that, that, you know, I've killed hunting or we, we buy um, half a cow from our farmer. That's, yeah. our, that's a neighbor. So like all my kids for the most part, understand the whole you know this is where food comes from that's not to say that my kids don't eat like shit sometimes because yeah. they definitely <laughs> yeah, shit all kids sometimes. Do, but mcdonald's is always convenient <laughs> yeah. but it's you know you just i don't know having that the, we if we are able to understand that because our parents did that for us then you know we should also do that for our kids yeah it's just something that today in today's society i think that we get uh everybody is it's so fast paced that everybody gets worked up you don't get the chance to sit down and eat with your your kids every single night face to face sometimes you got to go to this practice that practice and it's easy for you to just lose sight of everything you're stressed out with work wife stressed out with work you're stressed out with work the kids have school they got homework they got this practice and then all of a sudden like um, the dynamics around dinner time start to break down you know, and it, it's easy to occur. Yeah. And uh, I think that, you know, we do as, as best we can to keep those it's high sac- on our priority sacred list. Sacred for you guys. There. Yeah. It's tried to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Man. Yeah, uh, I got three I've, kids too, and they freaking make it. How old are your kids? Two, four, six. Oh, man. He's, Dear God. He's in it. You did it. You Dear Two, God. two, and two. Bro. Uh, uh, boy, boy, boy. Two girls oh. and a boy. Boy's the youngest. He's the youngest. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a little shithead. Nice. Yeah. Yes. It's awesome. Yeah. He's he's legit. I, you know what? I was like, uh, you know, my oldest is a tomboy. And I was like, oh, if I don't have a boy, this is fine. Clara is like, she's a little tomboy. Literally she, taken three hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> she's a little tomboy. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's not that much different than a boy, I'm sure. And then I had Sully and he was like doing backflips off the couch and stuff. And I'm like, all right, well, that's different. Yeah, that's, boy, That is I, a legitimate difference. <laughs> I said the same thing about Adeline. Yeah. I thought Adeline, uh, I had her, we had her when I was 22 years old. So I don't know an adult life without a child. She's yeah. going to be 17 here in a month. And it's like, holy shit, this is nuts. I thought like she'd be my only kid and she was very tomboy-esque. And I raised her as if she was going to be my only child and my son. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, you're going to be a hard motherfucker. Nobody's going to be harder on you than I am. So you will always be tough and be prepared for anything in life. Lo and behold, I had it all. And then now having SJ, yeah, dude, boys are way different. (laughs) Boys are way different. It's just different. Like, you know, a boy... It, it is as rough and <laughs> as ragged as Clara is. She never like would just hit somebody in the head with like a, a toy hammer. Yeah. Like Sully will do that. Yes. He has well, no. He gives, he gives no fucks. Yeah, he gives no shits. <laughs> Or we, just uh, whip his dick out and piss <laughs> anywhere. That's he's a, trying to get his little wiener out, man. We're teaching him how to pee, uh, and he's like, now he's like, finally understanding. Didn't he like, drop a deuce in your backyard randomly? Yeah, he did. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's, that's Jay did the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's funny Here's because a good patch of grass. Yeah. yeah, Hannah's like, all right, this is just how boys become men, and men continue to be boys. I'm like, yes, yes. I was like, because he's going to preschool. Sj starts preschool next week, and our biggest fear 
is him just whipping his dick out and pissing <laughs> anywhere. Like he he will be like, oh, I gotta go pee. He will not go to the bathroom. He'll walk outside. Yeah. and go piss. And outside. you guys, you guys live out in the country, don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. The world Same is a man's us. bathroom. Oh, dude, is. That's the that's the problem. Is like, <laughs> yeah, we did that for a t-shirt. Oh, I can't believe you're worried about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. You should have given him a candy cigarette. Oh sure. man, <laughs> that's amazing. That is so. Now I want that shirt. Yeah, it works. Uh, it worked. It worked. It did work. <laughs> um. To, to, um, this is all good content, man. I mean, I love talking about what we're talking about. I want to get into a little bit about the barbecue today. Um, just because dude, you're so well-traveled, you've been to a lot of events, you've done a lot of, um, you know, a lot of public appearances and so forth. And I just want to know what was our barbecue like compared to other places we've been doing the same thing, dude, for 15 plus years. We don't get out much, you know, like I don't know what other people are doing. I didn't, uh, there was a ton of people whenever we first pulled up, uh, like just seeing the number of tents, I was like, Oh these guys don't fuck around. I was like, this is a big event. It's you, you got the whole parking lot and then seeing how just all the tents. And then there was, there was a whole workout going on in the, in the, in the beginning of it. It was, um, how it was done, how, just how excited everybody was, was something, but not all of events are like this. This is a very special event in it. You guys, again, like I said, you guys don't fuck around. This is uh, unique in the sense of the community aspect because everybody, there's not one person that wasn't there excited and had good things to say about what was going on. Now, you really wouldn't expect anybody to say bad at any event going on, but whenever you experience something like this, you're like, oh yeah, this is good. This is done right. There's there's all kinds of different, uh, there's all kinds of different um, uh, companies and other things, all the gyms. Other small companies, small brands, whatever it was, it wasn't discriminated. There was food trucks. There was everything. Like, it was there to be a spectacle for the community. Truly saying, thank you to all of the customers. Please come out. Bring the family. There's something for everyone to do. And whenever you have something like that, you know, that's, it's, it's not... It's not an accident that you guys are as successful as you are. Let's put it that way. Well, dude, I mean, really, really appreciate you coming because I think that you did a really, you did a huge, huge thing when it came to drawing more people in. You know, this is our biggest probably turnout, wouldn't you say? I would absolutely say so, yeah. And I'd say you, you had a huge part in that. Man. Well, it, it, I mean, I, I'm grateful to be a part of it. I, I love, I, I'm not, we don't, you guys know this. We don't get to do what we do if we don't have a good customer base. If we don't do a good job at what we do and making sure that we, it's all for the customers. All the work that we do, all the time that we sacrifice away from our families, all the time that we put into the work that we do, all the time that we spend with training new employees, all of it is done for the benefit of the company, which is the benefit of the consumers. Yeah. And if you do a good job, more consumers will show up because people are gonna be like, that's cool as fuck. Mm -hmm. This was great. It was awesome. You should have been there. You should have seen it. And I, I pride myself on making sure that I take time with people, talk to them, shoot the shit. Cause everybody has a story to tell, especially with a lot of the intense videos that I put out. They're like, this was the video that hooked me. And then I just take the time to get to know them, talk to them. And that was one thing that I noticed. It was pretty cool. It's like you were spending a, a pretty decent amount of time with every single person. Oh, you didn't cut a single person short. Yeah. Ooh, no. Cause every, I mean, it's everybody has something to say. They're, they're excited. There's people don't spend a hundred dollars with my companies. Yeah. They spend thousands of dollars. So if I, do, if I don't take that into consideration and say, well, I'm here for the whole day. I don't care if I sat there for 12 hours today. What, what am I? I don't care. I'll hang out all day and talk to people about the cool shit that's happened and what they do for a living and what makes them tick and their wife's with them, their kids are with them. Not nobody, very few people were there alone. Yeah. You know, they were there with the, their girlfriend, their husband, their, their boyfriend, their kids, whatever it may be. It was, there's a story. I had people there were like, Hey, my dad's a big fan. I'm just here. Can I get a picture with you and get him something signed? I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> you waited in line this whole time just for your dad. Yeah. Like, yeah. He couldn't make it. He's at work. I'm yeah. like, want to take a picture? You want me to take a video for him? Whatever. It's awesome. <laughs> you know, some and, public cameos. Yeah. You know don't, I mean, yeah. shit, you can't take this for granted. It's way too cool. Mm -hmm. I love that, man. There's a, that is cool, man. It's something that, you know, him and I used to work the counter every day and we used to always talk about just like the energy exchange you have with people. And when they come in the door, right. And you, we used to get that every day. And so now it's really just our barbecues where we get to see all of our old friends, all the people we saw every single day when they came into the store. And so it's really just like a family affair. I mean, like we have people that have shopped with us over 10 years that are coming out for these now. And so we're always going to try to make them better. We're always trying to make them bigger. Uh, but also just, again, like don't want to lose that intimacy like you're talking about where you get to have those quality conversations with people. Oh, for sure. And, and you know, is putting on something like this is no small task. This takes a lot. 
mm-hmm. especially like you know uh, I believe her name is Tori. Tori, yeah. shout Alvin, out Tori. Uh, Alvin was it. just he was like he's like Tori's killing it. I'm yeah. like oh nice. And then she, whenever I got to meet her, I was like yeah this is well put together, well organized. And Alvin was like top notch. Yeah. He's phenomenal. So it was it's it's cool to hear those things. Good man. Um, yeah. Fitness industry. You've uh-huh. been in a part of it for a long time. Uh-huh. Where do you feel like you see it going that you like about where it's going? And then what do you see about where it's going that you don't like? Um, it goes up and down, you know, for me at least, and seeing the trends and everything, it goes up and down. Uh, right now, I I love where it's going right now uh, because some of the top influencers, the trend twins, uh, those two being just, I see, I see their YouTube videos and I'm like, these two complete dickhead morons. <laughs> I love them. I think Bro, it's one great. of them just competed, or did they both they just both compete? competed? Yeah, but good it's for it, them. so the you know there's a lot of the science based stuff out there, and then there's a lot of bro science stuff. I like the fact that um, you know with those two in particular, they're not hiding anything. Yeah, they're not trying to be somebody they're not. They are being 100 percent authentically them, and they're having success. Fuck yeah, dude! I love that. Um, and then the one thing that I hate about the industry now is like the rage baiting. Uh, uh, the rage baiting content that it's just baiting people in the negativity. And I'm like, ah, don't fall for that shit. Nah, come yeah. on. Like, don't do that. Like, I don't like, I don't like the shit talk on other people, but it is something that gets a lot of clicks and a lot of likes. The negativity will always draw attention. I mean, that's all the news in TMZ and, you know, even mainstream media is nothing but, you know, rage bait. That's it's true. Like, mm-hmm. When do you ever see like this wholesome thing that happened with this or that? No, you're seeing, hey, there's a fire, there was a shooting, there was this, there was that, working you up thinking, I can't go downtown. Yeah. I will die if I go downtown. Actually, no, you won't. You'll be okay. You can go have a good time. But it's just, I don't like, uh, I hate that on the internet. I hate it. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I, I think that uh, from the from a fitness industry standpoint overall, I am pleased with where it's going. Competitions are going up. The number of people competing are increasing. It's getting cool. To, it's cool to compete. It's cool to try something new. Um, and like I said, some of the top influencers, bro, they're just being them. They're authentic, which I love. I think, um, you know, the the introduction of, of classic and the popularity of like C-Bum has really helped. You you guys got that um, uh, new yeah. dude. Um, Anton. Anton. Yeah, young he's a kid. freak. It's, it, yeah. Th- that's How old is that I mean. dude? I think he's 20 right now. IPB Pro. Freak. Unreal. Hey, listen, he's, he's not normal. Yeah. He is, he is. Guys like that, when you see guys, you know, that's just, it's an, it's the new generation. It's cool. If that kid keeps his shit together, yeah, he is going to be absolutely fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Phenomenal. He's a good kid. Is he? He, very good kid. He is a 20 year old meathead. And I mean, I'm like, Hey, I'm like, Hey, just dude, think of you, you, dude. the good times when you didn't care about anything else. You didn't have any other responsibilities. No other responsibilities. That's the big one, dude. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I'm just going to literally my, my Saturday is I'm going to go to Costco. I'm going to go train. Then I'm going to go to Costco. Then I'm going to meal prep my dude, old we, we meals. Did, and I'm going to fuck off the rest of the day. We had our pump fest event. Okay. Yeah. Brought in all the athletes, had a, had a ton of fun. And, uh, it was outside fucking 90 degree day in the sun. Everybody's sunburnt as fuck. Okay. After the event's over, it's like four thirty, five o'clock. He is jumping out of his skin, being like, oh, I'm ready to fucking go train chest. And I'm like, <sighs> You're like, oh, dude, I'm gonna go take a nap. I'm like, yeah. but I need to decompress, have a <laughs> meal, and think about driving home. And this kid is amped out of his mind, ready to go train chest. I'm like, I am not the same. <laughs> yeah. I am not the same anymore. Cause and I'm like, this is it was it was awesome to see because uh he just has a Re- unrelenting passion for bodybuilding. He's gonna do. He's gonna do incredible things. Very cool. He will. Man. Yeah. Man, we you th- think he'll? You think he'll stay in classic? Yeah, he's got a ton of weight. Got yeah. a ton of weight Does still. He? Yeah, I he think he just looks huge for a twenty-year-old kid. Pull up a picture of that what's kid. It, Luke. What's, what's he walk around at? I think he's two twenty right now. He's yeah. freaking. He kept jacked. saying to, he his legs kept, are massive. He kept saying two twenty club, and I'm like, dude, I'm two ten. <laughs> he's like you think i'm bigger than you i'm like yes you're bigger than me <laughs> yes he's like you think so and i'm like bud i'm looking at you yeah. i know what i am look at you yeah yeah anton ratush he's got that good that's that's uh anthony mantello that was from a couple years ago go to uh anton a-n-t-o-n on instagram you gotta properly creep you just gotta go to where you know who Seth's following and type in anton yeah there he is anton swole yeah. Jesus, dude. Look at those fucking legs. 20 years old. 
Okay, go to uh, the next post. That's him getting ready for his show. That's him now in an off season. That's off season. It's fucking wild, man. Look at his legs. My go God. to the next one. My God. Yeah. Silly. Next one. That's him now. That's now. That's that's eating clean off season food. Like fucking freak. Dear God, man. Look how young he is. He's a fucking boy. He's a baby. He's a boy. He's a baby. That's wild, man. <laughs> the only place he doesn't have lines and wrinkles is his face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The only place he doesn't have cuts is his fucking face. So I'm excited because he's somebody that I honestly believe that he's Luke, you'll going, watch that video later, don't worry. We know. He is going to be uh he'll be on top of the he'll be on top of the classic industry in a very short period of time. Yeah. And uh, you know, with all these young guys. They everybody knows that they want everything here now. They don't want to wait for anything. It's like holding on to those reins and saying, just progress properly. Don't do anything dumb. Don't fuck your physique up. Don't fuck your health up. Just do the right things. Everything will come to you. Let time pass. You know, you know who's done that really well, I think, is Derek Lunsford. Oh. Because the first time I saw him, I was running a store in Illinois. And he's from Illinois. And somebody's like, look at this kid that beat my ass in this show. And they showed me a picture of Derek Lunsford at like 170. And he looked basically the same then as he does now. So he's basically kept his waist tight, kept the lines the same, but just gotten, you know, he's put on 100 pounds since then. Well, I mean, it's, and it's, <laughs> it's no accident. Derek's not stupid, and he has the best coach in the game. Yeah. And it's, that plays a huge role. Whenever you have, as a coach, and you're a good coach, and you have – up someone with a ton of potential like they're they're going to stay on top of you and that's anton with kyle kyle wilkes phenomenal coach just outstanding he is young he is ambitious he knows his shit he knows how to make sure people do the proper health protocols he doesn't let people get out of hand with anything like whenever it's time to do health do health when it's time to go on you go on mm -hmm. when it's time to do your thing you do these don't fuck this up when you're on, you need to pay attention to these things for red flags. Like, there's a proper way to take them, like I said. But there's also that thing where you're going to push boundaries and limits at certain times, and it's just going to be because of what it is. Mm. With Anton, you have someone who is just a genetic fucking freak. Yeah. Derek Lunsford. The dude has it. Yeah. And Derek, I think, I said this uh, before he won the Olympia. I was like, I think Derek is going to be the next multiple winning reigning Mr. Olympia. And, uh, and I think that I think he'll win again this year. Um, and I think that he is going to be, who's, who's your dark horse though? Is that, uh, I got, I got a, I got a, a guy that I think could push into there. I don't know if there, there are dark horses. I think, you know, everybody's top five are going to be, you know, uh, Derek Hottie, Samson, Andrew Jack, Nick Walker, Hunter Labrada. But I think the guy that's going to creep up uh, again, just massive fan of him is Martin Fitzwater. Yeah. I think Martin Fitzwater is going to work his way into that top six conversation. Um, you know, depending this Olympia, I think next year he's going to push even harder. And I think he's going to find himself into pushing that top six, top five Olympia. Yeah. I, Who's I, yours? Well, I was going to say, I mean, you name mine, but I think Andrew Jack could legitimately uh, like place top two. I think that I, I think that um, I don't think what he did at Texas was his 100% best. Yeah. Yeah, there's Fitzwater now. Uh, I think that Andrew Jack is going to peak for the Olympia and not so much uh, the uh, – he didn't peak at Texas. No. I think he was 85% of what he could be. Yeah. I think he's going to freak he everybody out. He's a freak, dude. I don't know. He just kind of has that, like, Cedric type of, like, where you feel like he could do it at any time. We were we were at uh, the Pittsburgh. Uh, we were the title sponsor of the Pittsburgh show, so Jim always uh, does uh, Capital Grill. Mm -hmm. So everybody goes to Capital Grill after after the show. It's a good and meal. It, oh, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Jim is a phenomenal guy. Mannion, just outstanding. He is – I love the guy to death. And uh, so we're sitting at the table, and uh, – there was a few seats at our table and Samson, Samson's wife, and then Andrew came in and they sat there and it was me, Hannah, and and uh, Adeline. And she sat next to Andrew Jack. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, they're sitting there and Adeline's like, what the fuck is going on right now? Just yeah. having a conversation with him, but then just seeing how big Andrew was because he was like 330 at Dude, the time. Yeah. And he she's gets just, on stage at 300. Heavy she's, breathing just like, she was like, what the bites. fuck is sitting next to me? Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, I dude. just man, he's a freaking a freak of nature. 
such but a, very very hard to to you know dethrone Derek, which is just like you were saying. There's when you some see truth him, to like when they're when you were a repeat champion and you come back peeled and you come back you know looking the same. It's pretty hard to dethrone someone. That's that's how I think it's going to go. I yeah. think it, to, in order to dethrone Derek, you're going to have to be that much better than him. And I don't know if that's going to got to be like on yeah like non negotiable looking. Yeah, yeah, I which would, I, would, I would argue would probably be very difficult to do. I'm a big Derek fan too. Yeah. Big Derek fan. We uh we have a question we ask all of our guests, and uh, it's really just not pertinent <coughs> because you're not from here and you don't eat a lot of barbecue here. But we're gonna we're gonna get you some good barbecue. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. But let's talk about your um you know your longest most you know gnarly prep you ever had to do. What is the thing that comes to peak for cravings for you when you're in that moment? What's the food that you look forward to most when you're done with the show? It's been so long. It's been so long. So there's certain things I do in my life now that I still do because of bodybuilding. I will not eat white fish. I will not eat tilapia. You did eat too much tilapia. <laughs> oh, God. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I drink my coffee the way I do because of in prep. I like coffee with that shitty non-dairy creamer, the powdered stuff. It's really bad for you that people caught on fire and say you're going to die. Uh. I like it. Um, uh, but things I craved, I love peanut butter and jellies. I eat a peanut butter and jelly rice cake every single night of my life right now. I love that because it's a rice cake. Because that's, oh, I won't put that's it on, the I'll, most prep thing ever. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's uncrustable for me. I want the rice cake. It's on a rice cake because of because I, that's all I wanted to eat when I was on prep. Unflavored? Or are we going flavor? Uh, you ever I, mix it up with an You got to have the crunchy, dude, because when you're prepping, a lot of times Nothing's everything's freaking like yeah. So chewy I'll, I, Yeah, I switch back and forth. and But every single night, I eat a peanut butter and jelly rice cake. Because whenever I was on prep, I wasn't allowed. So, like, uh, that's the one sweet thing I eat every single day of my yeah. life. Strawberry grape jelly? Kids really I make like it both, hard. But I like, I prefer strawberry. But if I do, like, sugar-free, I like sugar-free grape jelly. I don't know why. It's the, it's not delicious. The Smucker's brand specifically? Yeah, yeah, Pretty Smucker's. Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Very good. <laughs> We've all had, hey, what's the difference between jelly and jam? <laughs> <laughs> you can't jelly, I can't jelly my cock down your throat. <laughs> I love that you knew that. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows that answer, too. Yeah. That was so funny. Pat McAfee's show last week, someone asked him, what's the difference between jelly and jam? He's like, we have kids on this <laughs> show. We can't <laughs> talk about that. Yeah. That's oh, funny. my God. That, hey. guy, that guy, I mean, he's from my hometown. Yeah. He, uh, he's, he's from, uh, he went to. Uh, Plum. Yeah. He went to, yeah. Then he went he, to uh, West Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah. He went to Plum. Where Goob went, our, by the way. Goob went to West Virginia. West Virginia. No he's shit. from West Virginia. That's what I found out last night. Yeah. I did not know that. But yeah, Pat's from uh, Alvin and Pat went to high school together. No wonder you guys are crazy shitheads, <laughs> dude. I bet you Pat was fucking the funnest guy of all time in high school. I uh, there are stories about that young man. I would guess that so. were that I have heard from reliable sources that are fucking hilarious. <laughs> he did not he did not disappoint in any way, shape, or form ever. That's amazing. He is the degenerate fucking dickhead that has made it. On a massive <laughs> level, and he is who he is. It's yeah. and he, all those he took guys being a sarcastic asshole for a living to the fullest degree. All of those guys that are on that show are his buddies from high school, from the hometown. Our lead designer at our company, Nick, is cousins with one of his one of the guys on the show. On the everyday guys, yeah, they're yeah. like they get together at the holidays, everything. Yeah, that's I love cool. it. Phenomenal. They're it's awesome. It's I love know. seeing people make it like that, man. Oh, so cool, bro. I heard he was hammered on his show yesterday out in Dublin, Ireland. Oh, Alan was he? telling me that he was like, he was just slamming Guinnesses because they were at a pub in Ireland, hammered on ESPN. Not going to not. Yeah. Not gonna, gonna, like, yeah. Like, what the hell are you going to Ireland for unless you're going to yeah. smash some Guinness? This is awesome. like, Authenticity is just winning. It's Dude, awesome. Just hammered yeah. on ESPN. Awesome. That's Something, so funny. Something's going right. Yeah. Man. Do you see Kirk Herbstreet was like, hey, we just dropping F bombs now? And he goes, yeah, and I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we've already been canceled so many times. He's like, I don't care anymore. Just, Kirk Herbstreit's like, okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. He's like, all right, man. T times have changed. Yeah. Seth, we appreciate your time so much, yeah, man. Thank it's you, been man. such an awesome time getting to know you, man. Thank you. And uh, thank you for being on the show today. Um, if you guys have not followed Seth already, where can they find you, please? Uh, on Instagram, my name Seth Ferrosi. That's pretty much everywhere you can find me. We have that. So Instagram, YouTube. Uh, and again, gentlemen, thank you. This has been awesome. Uh, simple. Like I said, you guys don't fuck around on any level. The, the hospitality with every single employee I've heard. Thank you so much for coming a million times from every single person. And it is, you can see it through 
this entire brand, that the people are authentically appreciative of everything that people do. The hospitality is off the charts, and it has been an absolute pleasure to be here. That means a lot, man. Thank you very much. Super thankful for that. Thank you so much, man. Very much so. Sick. Come back and duck on this thing. I am am in for a duck. He's got, dude.